<laughs> Pat, while that's happening, the 15th is a special meeting? 13th. 13th is a special meeting next Tuesday. We are now live. Good evening, everybody. Let's just uh, give it a couple minutes. We'll let our count go up. And uh, we do have a number of items carried tonight. Uh, we'll announce those at the beginning of the meeting. Cameron, if you could put those in the chat for everybody. And we'll just refire everybody to the chat a couple times. Um, and let's make sure that the chat is live this time. So we're up to, uh, we're down to, a, I'm sorry, we're around 113 participants. Uh, if anybody is in the meeting that's calling in and also logged in on a computer, uh, if you could, please just use one of those. Uh, we do have a limit of 100, um, 100 attendees. Right, Matt? Right. Okay, so if we could, let's come to order, please. And join me in a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you, everybody. Uh, could we have a sunshine announcement, please? Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Um, today is Tuesday, April 6th in the year 2021. This is a Jersey City Planning Board meeting with a scheduled 5.30 p.m. start time. To adhere to social distancing protocols and best practices imposed by city and state authorities, the city of Jersey City canceled all public meetings until further notice. As a result, this planning board meeting is being held virtually as a video conference that is open to the public. In accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting has been given to the editor of the Jersey Journal, Jersey City Reporter, and posted with the city clerk on March 29th and re-sunshined on April 1st, 2021. This meeting was also posted on the Jersey City Division of City Planning webpage and all distribution materials made available to the board were published and available to the public. Thanks, Cameron. Uh, could we have a roll call, please, Bridget? I do the roll call? Mm -mm. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so, I was like, oh, wow. Mike's really, right. Mike's really good because I can't write and talk at the same time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just firing names out tonight. <laughs> um, okay, so Commissioner Gonzalez. Here. All right, Commissioner Desai. Yeah. All right, Commissioner Torres. Yeah. Commissioner Allen. Yeah. Commissioner Horton. Here. Chairman Langston. Here. Okay, and, and, and Waterman's not here. Councilwoman. I'm Waterman. right in front of you. I'm right in oh, front of you. Oh, hey, Council President <laughs> Waterman. My screen cuts off at. You, you I'm, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> That's okay. I'm here. All right, and Council President Waterman. <laughs> I'm here. Okay. <laughs> uh, we have a quorum. Okay. okay, thank you. Okay, Bridget, could we swear on the staff, please? Okay, would you all raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the testimony or comments you're about to give tonight will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bridget. Cameron, do we have any correspondence? Yes. Yeah, so in the chat, I've posted the applications that have carried. Um, <clears throat> so... Case P20-153, the last item on the agenda, 
three, four, five Baldwin will be carrying and re-noticing for April 20th. It's an administrative amendment. Again, that's P20-153. Um, 170 Monticillo, case nine on the agenda, will carry to April 20th, and they will also be re-noticing. Now, the remainder of the cases, starting with case number eight, will be carrying with preservation of notice. So that is starting with item eight, 370 Princeton, which we heard last week, they are carrying to April 20th with preservation of notice. Item number 15, case P20-152, 615 Pavonia, carrying to April 20th with preservation of notice. Case number 17, P20-058, 26th Street, they're carrying to April 20th with preservation of notice, as well as item 18, P19-082, and item 20, P20-126. Okay, thanks, Cameron. Of course. So if anybody missed any of those, uh, you can go into the chat, all those, uh, cases are listed in the chat and uh, we'll refer back to that a few times tonight. So let's uh, get into new business. We'll call item 11 is case P21-008 is a conditional use for 149 Palisade Avenue. Am are you able to promote? Uh, my computer is running a little bit slow at the moment. I, I did. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Are you able to hear me okay? Yeah, we got you. You have a new microphone there, huh? <laughs> I, I, I do. <laughs> um, okay. So before we get started with this, I just wanted to say that I, I do have a couple of professionals for later applications that are not able to get onto the meeting because it's over the capacity limit. So hopefully it, it thins out by the time we, we get there, um, but just so the board's aware. Okay, thank you. Can we just, uh, can we just reiterate uh, one of the announcements? Because I think that just looking at the scope of some of the projects listed on the agenda, two Sixth Street application if you are here tonight on that application, will not be called tonight, will not be heard, there will be no public comment made or asked for on that item. You will have uh, you will have to follow back and attend the meeting on April twentieth. We will not be calling that item. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Stephen Joseph of the Sharami Law Firm for the applicant. Um, Council, can I confirm you've received my notices and they're acceptable? Thank you, Council. I am going to receive the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to the application at 149 Palisade Avenue. Chairman, all does appear to be in order. We can mark those as A1 for the record. Thank you, Council. A1. <laughs> <clears throat> Great, thank you. Uh, 149 Palisade Avenue. This is an existing non conforming three family home. It's located on the west side of Palisade Avenue between Hopkins and, and Beacon Avenue. The applicant's proposing to convert the first floor of this building into a medical office. Um, this would result in a, a conforming mixed use building, medical office on the ground floor, two dwelling units above. So being reduced from three dwelling units to two dwelling units. The R1 zone, which is normally a, only a one and two family district, does permit medical uses on, on the ground floor. Um, it's a conditional use, so certain conditions have to be met. Uh, one condition is that the property must be located on the west side of Palisade Avenue between St. Paul's Ave and Waverly. We meet that condition. Uh, the use, the medical use on the ground floor uh, has to be restricted to the ground floor, and the use cannot include ambulatory care, diagnostic centers, rehabilitation centers, or drug treatment centers. Um, we do have an architect this evening, if the board would like to hear from her, Mopi Bajaj, you've heard from her many times. She does have 
a very simple um, plan for the board if, if you feel it's necessary. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll defer to the board. I don't have any questions. Uh, yeah, you meet the criteria for, for conditional use. Uh, anybody, any questions? No. I don't no, I have no questions at all. No. Okay, okay. so, so I, I won't bring up Mukti then. I did receive the staff report. Um, all the conditions are acceptable uh, with, with one caveat that there, there's a standard condition on there that all materials and colors shown on the plans be in the final, final signature sets. Uh, there's, there's no materials and colors shown on the plans because there, there's not a whole lot of construction proposed here. This would otherwise go through the building department for that review. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can take that condition out, obviously. Um, all right, so council, if it's okay, we'll open it up for public now. Absolutely. All right, thank you. Uh, right. If anybody's here from the public that, that would like to comment, <clears throat> please raise your hand. If you are calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Anybody from the public that wants to comment on 149 Palisade Ave, raise your hand. If you're calling in, press star nine, please. Mr. Chair, seeing no public, I move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Uh, I don't think we have Tim on. Who's handling this then? Oh, I'm just covering for Tim real quick. Um, okay. So, Attorney Joseph has already agreed to the staff conditions, except for the second condition regarding the materials. Um, it conforms with the plan and staff recommends approval. Okay, thanks, Cameron. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P20-072. Second. All right, motion made and seconded. All right, so Vice Chair, Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Desai. Yeah, I, I know this place and this building, it was owned by another doctor before. So definitely I would say aye. All right, Commissioner Horton. Aye. All right, Commissioner Allen. Aye. All right, Council President Waterman. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. Okay, motion carries all in favor with conditions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Council. All right, let's move on to case P20-071 as a preliminary and final major site plan. The address being 58 to 60 Center Street, York Street, Colgate and York Street, and 214 Bright Street. That promoted Chuck. Good evening, um, commissioners, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Charles Harrington on behalf of the uh, applicant for uh, this, this application. I'd ask, uh, oh, I see Mr. Pucci's been, I, okay, both my uh, professionals have been uh, promoted, uh, great. Um, so yeah, again, Charles Harrington of Connell Foley on behalf of the applicant, this, uh, I just note uh, before starting that this, uh, there are two deviations that we noticed for that are not listed on the agenda. Um, so I'd ask that they be, uh, re the notices be reviewed and marked into the record, uh, and I'll I'll discuss the uh, the variances after that. Helps if you unmute yourself. Uh, 
Chairman, I haven't received the affidavit of publication proof of mailing. This was originally noticed for the March 23rd meeting. At that time, I did review the notices. I do find that they all appear to be in order and we can mark them as A1 for the record. All right, thank you, Council. A1. Thank you. Uh, so in that regard, there, uh, just briefly, there's two, two variances we're asking for tonight, which uh, we think are, are minor um, in, in uh, regards to the entire project. It's a rear yard setback, and we'll explain that during the presentation. And uh, for relief from the rooftop uh, bulkhead setback from the frontage of the building. So um, this building or the application before you uh, is by is being made by the owner Vincent Ruggiero, who is a member of York Street West, uh, and his partner uh, Thomas Cretelli. They have been designated as the redeveloper uh, by the JCRA. Uh, the property is located in the Bates Street redevelopment plan. Uh, it is a somewhat of an odd lot you'll see during the presentation in that it. Uh, it has four side, uh, four frontages, uh, and I just note that uh, that it's it's almost the entire tax block, uh, but because it's not, the Bay Street plan, a uh, redevelopment plan provides that you can uh, utilize or must use, utilize the neighborhood commercial standards. So, what you're seeing here tonight is a uh, a project that you would see uh, pursuant to the neighborhood commercial uh, regulations under a regular zoning. Um, we are proposing a five-story building with 100 residential units and 25 parking spaces. Those, uh, all of those uh, criteria or regulations are compliant and consistent with the neighbor neighborhood commercial standards. Um, we have been uh, working with the planning on this. And as, as I noted earlier, we have been designated, uh, or my client has been designated by the JCRA. We have also made a a couple of presentations to the Van Voorst uh, Neighborhood uh, Community Association. Um, and some changes were made as a, as a result of, of those uh, meetings uh, and that uh, led us here to tonight. Um, so with that said, I have two, uh, two witnesses. Um, my uh, engineer, Michael Pucci is going to uh, get the, uh, the board familiar with this site. And then Robert Larson, um, is going to testify as the architect as well as the planner uh, with regard to the two requested deviations. So uh, with that said, um, I'll ask that Mr. Pucci be um, promoted. I'm already promoted. I'm just waiting to be sworn yeah. in. Did you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes. And just state and spell your full name for the record. Michael Pucci, P-U-C-C-I. Thank you. And um, Mr. Pucci, uh, could you give the board a brief uh, summary of your professional educational experience? I'm a professional engineer. I appeared before this. I'm sorry, guys. We were, I was muted. Uh, Mr. Pucci, we've qualified you before. Your license is current tonight? Yes, it is. Okay, you're qualified. Thank you. So if I may share my screen, I will just start with an aerial picture and hopefully you can see this. Okay, <laughs> now that I've shared it, I can't see it, but that's okay. Um, so an aerial picture showing we, the property. Okay, and, we, here we go. As Mr. Um, Harrington described it, it is most of the city block located north of Bright, south of York, east of Center, and west of Colgate. It is lots four through seven. Lots one, two, and three in the lower left-hand corner here are not part of this project. And therefore, we are governed by the NC zone. And what you see upon here is a rendering of what the um, building will look like. I will then switch to another screen. Mr. Harrington, was this submitted with the application package? Uh, I don't recall off the top of my head, so why don't we mark it as uh, A2? Thank you, Mr. Harrington. Yes, Mr. Lampe, good catch. This was actually a colored version of the site plan that was submitted, so this is a new exhibit. A2. Stopping to share that, I will...
I've now shared, uh, I assume, what will be A3, which is just an aerial photography uh, shot showing our site colored here in a rose color and giving you some orientation, the uh, turnpike extension on the left-hand side. And then just above us is the parking lot for uh, Jersey City Hospital's uh, EMT area. Those are all ambulances parked there and a park to our right. Now, to get into the meat of this, I will stop sharing that and just go straight to a uh, site plan of this application. Excuse me, are we marking that A3? Yes. Thank you, A3. Yes, please. Thank you, Bridget. Now what I have is the full set of plans that have been submitted as part of this application. And if I just rotate into the actual site plan view, which is the fourth sheet of that set, this is where I get to bore you with engineering testimony. I promise I will be quick. Um, as I showed you with A2 above, there is proposed to be a building that will occupy much of the entire block. This building will be four stories of residential above one story of either commercial on the street frontage or a parking area coming in off of York. The residential portion lobby will be at the corner of Colgate and York and will be elevated to be conforming to flood hazard regs. That is one foot above the flood elevation of 11. The residential will be at 12. The, res the retail portion along Bright and Colgate will be at street grade and you will see from my partner Rob in his presentation on, on architecture, what that will look like. The project does have conforming amount of parking underneath the building. There is a slight backyard area in here between the back side of the proposed building and the regularly shaped adjacent lots. And that area will be a landscape area. There is a bulk variance for rear yard setback at the ground floor, right at this little pinch point in this odd corner of the property, which again, Rob will give you the proofs for on that particular variance. There's also a variance, as Mr. Harrington said, for a rooftop amenity for a parapet, which Rob will explain. Uh, we have designed this project in conformance with all of your standard regulations, have worked with your MUA and city engineering. We have review letters from both and find those to be agreeable. We also have Ms. Clark's uh, letter from your planning staff, which basically does not comment on engineering aspects, but merely says, follow the review letter from engineering, which we intend to do. <clears throat> I really could bore you with more details, but I think that's really unnecessary. Uh, the glitz of the application really is in the architectural. Um, suffice it to say, we are providing all of the appropriate utility infrastructure, there is surrounding infrastructure around us. And as always, we are improving the streets, both sides uh, paved, uh, milled and repaved around the entire project, plus the 25 feet beyond our project at both intersections. There have been some additional things asked for by Lena in your engineering department that we agree to. Any questions for Mr. Pucci? Uh, yeah, I have no questions. Anybody else for Mr. Pucci? No. All right, okay. thank you, Mr. Pucci. Okay, then we're gonna uh, move on to Mr. Larson. And as I noted earlier, Mr. Larson is going to testify tonight uh, as a, an architect a pro and, and uh, a professional planner. Uh, so I know uh, he has been qualified before the board as, as an architect in the past. Um, and Mr. Larson, have you been qualified by this board as a planner as well? I have. Okay. Raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Great. Thank you. State and spell your full name for the record. Sure. My name is Robert Larson, L-A-R-S-E-N. Mr. Larson, good evening. Uh, are both of your licenses current tonight? They are. Okay. Thank you. You're qualified again. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just going to ask my partner to stop sharing his screen and uh, give me the power. You should just be able to boot them out. Oh, all right. Well, I, I should have taken that liberty, but um, we're in New Jersey. Don't worry. <laughs> boot them out. So uh, where I'd like to start is I'm actually um, just going to share the um, architectural uh, sheet from my architectural plans. Can everybody see this? We can. Yes. OK, great. So um, again, much as uh, I'm going to repeat some information, we are proposing 100 units. Uh, in a four stories of residential over retail and parking. Um, 
we are uh, proposing to have parking access off of York, York Street, the main building entrance off of Colgate Street residentially. Um, and what I've brought up here is the, um, the ground floor. So as you can see, if I point out here, this is our, our corner entrance. Uh, this is where the, uh, the stairs will enter. This will sort of be the, be the marquee entrance on Colgate at the corner of Colgate New York. Um, there is commercial frontage along Colgate, turning the corner along Bright. This will be below flood, but we have um, done this many times before in the city, and we will be providing uh, flood protection measures in the way of um, panels that will be stored on site. So should an event happen, uh, this commercial will be protected as required. Um, we also have on this ground floor bicycle storage, uh, other utilities. Um, within the, the main lobby here, we have a large lobby um, with some amenities, of, you know, um, as is necessary these days when you have a unit, uh, 100 unit uh, apartment building. Um, we wanted to provide, you know, some ample amenities, a gym, party room, business center, uh, things of the like. Um, and we also have, as Mike mentioned, a small uh, outdoor uh, sort of garden hardscape area that we can allow people to sort of privately go sit outside on the ground floor um, uh, to just, again, get to be able to be outside. Uh, and because I'm going to be the planner, I'm just going to point out again, we're talking about um, a pinch point right here uh, that, as you can see from the, the irregular shape of these lots, because we have frontage, um, identifying front and side yards was a little bit challenging, but working, working with your planning department and designing the building, we did identify that uh, we do require a variance for this point right here. Um, if I go to the next floor up, you can see that we actually jog the building in. And again, working with uh, um, planning, we, we decided that the, the intent here was to pull the windows back so they're not uh, you know closer to the property line. And so we did. Uh, so this portion uh, where you can see this line, that's actually the parking uh, close to the property line, but we took the residential and we set it in. The, the, all of the upper floors are set in about four additional feet to bring those windows away from that, uh, that line. Uh, looking at this floor, you can see uh, we have four identical floors for a total of 48 studio units, um, 36 one-bedroom and 16 two-bedroom units, um, <clears throat> uh, access from a center corridor, uh, utilizing elevators as well as uh, two egress stairs. You can see that um, there are two bathrooms shown here. Those occur on the uh, fourth residential floor. Uh, their purpose is they will serve as bathrooms for the rooftop amenity. Um, this is something we're pretty excited about as we work in, in Jersey City and we see it you know, uh, more and more being promoted, these active uh, outdoor spaces on the roof. Uh, so we have designed that into this project um, you know, as, we, as we feel we uh, should, right? And um, you can see we have a stairwell here, but we also have another here. <clears throat> this, the placement of this upper stairwell uh, is going to also be the topic of one of our variances. As we saw on the ground floor, I have some parking um, that if I were to bring that stair in, it would be interruptive to the parking. So I just want to point that out. And I'll also show you an elevation, the way that we've uh, sort of mitigated any effect of this staircase. But in my opinion, as an architect, it's really the, the best place for it. Um, while I'm thinking about it, I want to go back down to the ground floor. There was a comment in your engineer's letter about current uh, waste management standards to be sure that we met the uh, container requirements for the, the various recycling and trash uh, containers. So we have a uh, garbage room shown here. It is a chute system. It's a two chute system that permits recycling in one and uh, trash in the other. We will, uh, excuse me, likely have to increase this perhaps into the lobby space, excuse me, but we will be sure to comply with the comment that came through your engineer uh, that the necessary amount of storage for recycling and trash of all types, as she pointed out, uh, is present on site. Um, if I may now, <clears throat> I find that if I stop sharing and share again, it works better. Uh, I'd like to pull up, here we go, 
one of the elevations. So here we have the York Street elevation. Um, this shows the uh, parking entrance um, on York Street. It shows our four floors of residential over uh, the parking, uh, primarily on this facade. I will note that there's a 55 foot maximum height um, above the base flood elevation and we are in compliance with that calculation. Um, you can see here, uh, I didn't point them out in plan, but I'll point them out now. You can see here, we do provide a handicapped accessible ramp. Um, because we're uh, up above flood, we do need to provide accessibility and we have done so. Um, let's see, uh, as you can see, we're using a variety of materials. We have some uh, stonework, some panels, uh, metal coping, metal railings, uh, very clean line look. Uh, that I believe is, is very pleasant. We've um, kept windows and in interest uh, along the facade, again, having worked back and forth with uh, Ms. Clark to uh, address the concerns that are in the ordinance about the texture of the facade. Um, if I, tell me if this works, um, did it change? No, it didn't, oh. we still have the same view. Okay, we gotta stop sharing and start again, okay. Okay, how's that? Yes, yeah, okay. we got that. So now we have the Colgate Street elevation. Uh, you can see on the right, the stairs to the residential lobby, uh, again, raised up uh, to comply with flood elevation. And then we have our commercial frontage. Um, we are proposing signage, <laughs> though my renderer put a nice tree in front there. If you were to look at my plans, uh, we do propose compliant uh, commercial signage on both Bright and Colgate streets where the uh, commercial will exist, as well as uh, entry identification and address signage above the, um, the entrance to the residential portion of the building. <coughs> me. So, um, again, as an architect, um, I can tell you that... Uh, this is a, a building that is compliant with the various regulations that uh, I think is going to be appropriate for the, the market. I'm actually pretty excited to see this uh, particular project come about. It's an area that, uh, or it's, it's several lots that uh, are certainly going to see a huge change. We have the beautiful park across the street, um, and it's certainly going to be a, a big difference maker, I think, for this particular um, lot or block. Um, so I'm not sure, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, if you'd like me to stop as an architect or go right into planning testimony. Um, it's your show, sir. Yeah, all right, you got it. <laughs> whatever uh, we'll, uh, whatever we'll, works for you. We'll bulk them together. Excellent. Um, okay, so as a planner, uh, as we've noted, there are two variances required. Uh, the first is for the rear yard setback, um, where 15 feet is required. We have, a, I believe, a tight pinch point of eight but we comply at 15 feet for the upper floors. Um, this is again, something that I've uh, gone over with your uh, planning staff and I believe we satisfied them for the, the concern and realizing that this is somewhat of an odd shaped lot with a uh, unique opportunity for four street frontages and side yards at angles. Um, we feel that uh, by allowing this variance, we are able to get a, a better, suited building design to allow for the parking efficiency and the layout of the structure to maintain a good street line um, on the York Street side. Um, in terms of justification, once again, uh, I'll do them separately, but uh, I, I could offer that we have a C1 con condition here. We have a very odd shaped condition, but um, from a C2 perspective, I do feel that multiple purposes of the uh, municipal land use law would be further um, by permitting this variance and I'll, I'll use similar for the other. Um, once again, we are able to create a building that is gonna bring this development above flood. So I think of purpose B, which is to secure safe from, uh, from fire and flood. Purpose E, which is to uh, promote the well-being of a neighborhood, which I, once again, I think this is a, gonna be a beautiful building in an area uh, taking a variety of uses that are historically in place and, and put something quite beautiful on the lot. Um, and even purpose G, uh, again, realizing this is a redevelopment zone. Um, this is uh, being proposed in compliance with that redevelopment zone. However, um, uh, pushed to the regulations of the neighborhood commercial, 
Um, I do be believe that in Purpose G, providing uh, you know appropriate locations for and sufficient space for a variety of uses, this is um, in compliance and furthers that purpose. In terms of a detriment to the zone plan or zoning ordinance, um, I, I really see none. Again, we're very much in compliance um, with the zone itself, and uh, I see absolutely no detriment to the public good, considering that we've worked with um, the intent of that setback to be sure that we have no negative effect on our uh, perhaps future neighbors. Um, if I may stop sharing and go back to the York Street elevation, um, hopefully that worked. We have this form right here. I'm not sure if you guys can see me denoting that. Yeah, we can. Okay, so that's that's my one stair tower I pointed out in plan. Um, we have put an angled roof on it, but it does sit, it does start at that edge. There is a ordinance um, that requires a particular setback depending upon the height of the building um, that we are not in compliance with by having this um, sitting uh, up at the facade's edge. I do believe that we've mitigated the effect of it um, by really bringing my, my facade lines, my facade materials straight across and um, putting an angled roof on that particular portion of the, uh, of the stair tower, which in my opinion will be imperceptible uh, in elevation. Um, so once again, we are requesting that variance to have the, the stair uh, in that location. And really just for um, purpose of efficiency, I would offer that um, by the C2 criteria and those that I've already stated purposes B, E, and G for the design of this building. Um, I do also believe that this does create a desirable elevation, um, but I see that there would be no negative impact for the board to act positively in permitting this variance, that the uh, permission of it would not create a, a substantial detriment to the public good zone plan or zoning ordinance. Um, so again, as a planner, these are very minor variances. I, I feel that they are justified and um, able to be uh, granted by the board if you <clears throat> still wish. Um, that, that's the end of, of uh, both of my testimonies. Any okay, questions? thank you, Mr. Larson. Um, yeah, I do have three questions. Um, first of all, I didn't hear how many parking spaces are in there. There are 25 parking spaces. The neighborhood commercial zone that regulates the parking in this particular case is 0.2 spaces per bedroom, which would require 24, and we are proposing 25. Okay, so there's no uh, no parking set aside for retail use, correct? Um, the way the ordinance reads is you have to have more than 5,000 square feet, if I'm not mistaken, and we have about 3,000 square feet of retail. That's correct. Okay. Um, the other two questions, um, I want to talk about the rear yard setback. I is that a rear yard there? Um, <laughs> or is that is, a side yard? This is a conversation we, we've had, and I believe out okay. of an abundance of caution and the intent of these future separation for any future development, working with planning, we felt that we should make every effort to, so we're asking for it out of an abundance of caution. Yeah, we, we had just to add, I mean, it, it is a little bit confusing and we talked with playing about it and essentially said we could have an academic discussion for the next couple of hours or we could. I don't want to have we're, that. We're, we're, I don't either. We're going to no. request uh, the variance. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my understanding of, you know, what's a rear yard, what's a side yard that I've come to over the years is, you know, the smallest frontage is considered the front of the building. So that's why, you know, I'm a little confused that that's the rear yard. And I, I don't see, perfect, that's perfect view for me. Um, I don't see where that, you know, where a case would be made even in the future that that would be the rear yard. Yeah, it's it's an odd duck because we we literally have six sides there to that Yeah, a lot. Okay, um, so if we're considering it the rear yard, um, you said, Mr. Larson, you said you had an eight foot rear yard uh, at that pinch point. What does that vary to in the other spots? It, it, it continues to get much wider. I believe at this point here, it's in excess of 12 feet. 
This is eight right at the pinch going perpendicular, but then it just continues to get wider and wider as we go away. Um, 15 feet here to the structure straight on. Um, and as I pointed out, if, if I can do that, this point here is now in compliance on, you know, perpendicular, right? So um, this step in is something that we did at, at the request of working back and forth with planning to keep the windows away from that line. Okay, could you go back to the, uh, the prior view you had, the ground floor view? Um, okay, and I don't think, uh, I wanted to, to draw on it. I don't think I can do that with my iPad. <laughs> um, so from, from your eight foot pinch point, uh, going back to your, oh wait, I can, I can. Okay, just to make it easy. Uh, so this is your eight foot and your 12 foot here. Um, what is the distance in between? Is there, is there any part in there that complies? Well, yeah, I, I, again, I, I'm gonna ask my partner, Mike, who probably has an engineerable, an engineering scale in, in front of him but you can see the distance from there is one, two, three, four parking spaces. So that's, um, oh goodness, over, over uh, 30, let's see, they're 8.5, so 34 feet away. And mm -hmm. um, Mike, can you please measure and inform us the distance to the corner here and over? It's about 23 feet from the corner above and to the right, the, that is the inner corner at the garage wall out to the point where your indentation occurs on the upper floors. And that inner corner, which is in the center of Chairman Langston's now erased um, red circle, but since you have control right of the there, mouse, right? right there. <laughs> the yep. upper right okay. corner in of the building inside that circle up at the garage wall is 15 feet from the property line, but. You know, this is most definitely a side yard uh, to Center Street. It's the angled property line between the side yard of you know, coming off perpendicular Center Street and the one coming off of Bright. That's the one where the, uh, that particular building wall is 15 feet off the property line compliant there until you get up to that tuck-in point uh, upstairs to make sure that the 15 is maintained. Okay, so from say this area going over to Center Street. Uh, do we comply there? Well, we comply because it's there would be zero, but if we're, if we're discussing the 15 feet, um, it, it's gonna vary, right? So as Mike said, this, this is where it's been a little hard to, to really zone in on because if we take this angled line and create like a 15 foot rectangle behind it, that's what we've been sort of wrestling with and that we've been really addressing as a variance. As you can see from this side, zero foot side yards are permitted, right? So this is a dead yeah. wall. Um, these are brought back in really because the building couldn't get any fatter and it didn't make any sense. And we wanted to have some access to this rear yard. Um, yeah, so. Okay, understood. Yeah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna beat you up on this. Um, Okay, anybody else, any questions? That was it for me. Nobody else? All right, thank you, Mr. Larson, we appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so uh, yeah, I don't have any other witnesses. We did receive uh, planning staff's uh, memo dated uh, March 22nd and uh, we would agree to um, comply with the conditions. I just wanted to note the condition number five, um, just to clarify the obligation of, of the uh, applicant developer would be to coordinate an application or petition to the city council to adopt their recommendation regarding the adjacent street and no parking. Um, that is their recommendation. We agree with it, but ultimately it's the council's decision uh, on that, and we, we just don't want that to be a tail wagging the dog on you know any construction permitting or a lender um, that you know so long as we 
we work with them and petition it, which we will do, uh, that that, that um, satisfies our obligation. Um, Mallory, is that okay with you? Yes, yeah, I agree with Mr. Harrington that, you know, um, we're just asking that they work with engineering to bring it before council, but uh, making the approval contingent on that recommendation, I don't think um, is really necessary. I think that engineering um, had concerns with the traffic that will be increased in the neighborhood um, through the project. And so they would just like to see um, the parking removed from that side of the street to allow um, a better traffic flow in and out of the neighborhood. Um, so, you know, uh, I've talked with Chuck about this and he's agreed that, you know, they're fine to help engineering um, petition that and present the impacts of their project before council um, as an explanation. So as long as, you know, they're acting in best interest, I think that we're comfortable with that in our department. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So at this point, let's open it up for public comment. Uh, if anybody wants to comment, please raise your hand. If you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Anybody from public, if you'd like to comment, please raise your hand. And if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Chairman, see no public, I move to close the public. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second, public is closed. Uh, Mallory, anything else you wanna add? <clears throat> Um, just one thing, I did um, speak with Chris Fiore at the JCRA today, and he did confirm they have been designated as the redeveloper for the property. He said that the RDA is still um, in progress with them, so I just wanted to add a condition that um, once the RDA is finalized, they will provide our office with a copy, and that that should happen before the issuance of any construction permits. Mr. Harrington, you're okay with that? You agree with that statement? Uh, yes, we'll, we'll provide a copy of the RDA to, to planning card. Yes. Okay, excellent. Okay, that's it, Mallory. Anything else? Um, yeah, other than that, I think that, you know, the planner um, testified to the variances. The, the bulkhead, um, I think they've treated the facade to kind of ameliorate the presence of the bulkhead at the um, building line. And considering that this is a full frontage facade that takes up the frontage of the entire block, I don't think that um, there's a detrimental impact with, with the variance being granted. And regarding the rear yard, um, you know, they said we had conversation and we, and we really just worked to preserve light and air at that pinch point um, because that, that angled line is actually the rear yard lot line of the other uh, remaining lots on the property. So just to ensure that um, as those buildings develop out, should they have rear windows, that they wouldn't be prevented um, light and air. And so just that little move, I think will help open up a little bit of space there. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P20-071 as presented here tonight. Second. Okay, we have a motion made and seconded for approval. Vice Chair Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Allen. Aye. Commissioner Horton. Aye. Commissioner Desai. Aye. Council President Waterman. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. All in favor, motion carries with conditions. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council. All right, let's move on to case P20-127 is a preliminary and final major site plan with C variances. Uh, the address is 541 to 547 Martin Luther King Drive. All right, good evening, everyone, again. Um, Dennis evening. Savino is our architect, if we could uh, get him promoted. Um, Stephen Joseph of the Trami Law Firm. Uh, this application was actually carried from the last hearing, so the, the notices were preserved from that hearing. Um, all right, uh, so this is 541-543 MLK Drive. It, it's located on the west side of MLK Drive, and it, it's a strange lot. It has frontage on MLK and on Clinton. Um, technically not a corner, but it does have those, those two frontages. Uh, the property is in the neighborhood mixed use zone one of the Jackson Hill redevelopment plan. As part of this application, the applicant did meet with the councilman and we met with Jackson Hill Main Street. Uh, this, uh, it was carried from the last hearing and during the past two weeks, we, we took another look at the plans. There weren't any major changes but we did discover there was a, a miscalculation in, in the height of the building. 
uh, and we were able to remove that that variant. So this is now an as of right application. There, there's no variances associated with it. I did send some revised sheets over to Cameron and Bridget. So if we could get those marked into evidence. Okay, and let's mark that notice that. also. I'm sorry, Chairman, I, th I th <clears throat> Chairman, we did receive the notice for the March 23rd meeting at the time we reviewed it. It appeared to be in order and we did carry it to tonight. So we can mark the notice as A1 for purposes of the record. A1. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Joseph, you submitted those revised drawings. Could you just identify them by title sheet? We'll mark them for identification purposes as A2, A3, et cetera. And uh, then we can have them attested to by the witness and move them to evidence. Sure. Um, so they were prepared by, uh, by Dennis Devino, um, sheets Z1, Z2, and, and Z8 of the architectural plans. Is that A2 and 3, just as you just stated it, Stephen? Sheet Z1, Z2, and Z8? Correct. Okay, so A2, 3, and 4 into evidence. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Uh, so the applicant here is proposing a, a new five-story mixed-use building, 36 dwelling units, commercial on the ground floor. Uh, there's, no, there's no parking here. There's no parking required. Um, and all we need is uh, final site plan approval. So with that, um, Dennis, you should be able to, to share your screen. You're also on mute, Dennis. I got it. There we go. Yeah, just raise your right hand, Ms. Warren. Sorry? Mr. Davina, raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And just state and spell your full name for the record. Dennis with two N's, last name Davino, D E V, as in Victor I N. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Davino, good evening. Uh, we've qualified you in the past. Your license is current tonight? Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. You're qualified. Thank you. And we'll okay. identify the minor changes in the plans as we go through it. Um, some were regarding the height and some were suggestions by the community, but we'll, we'll identify those. Yeah, thank you. I want to thank the board for hearing our application. Um, so uh, Mr. Joseph, I just want to clarify those, um, those sheets that were modified. So we had uh, Z1, Z2, Z8, and Z9 through, Z9 through Z12, actually. Uh, so I, I, didn't, I didn't get those, okay. Dennis. Uh, what, what we can do is you'll just send me a, a complete new set of plans, and I'll send those over to Bridget right after this hearing, okay. just to avoid any, any confusion with that, if that's OK. Yeah, I mean, just to, again, just to clarify, they were the sheets that had anything to do with, with the height of the building, uh, the zoning chart. Um, the um and the and the elevations building elevations just clear okay so z9 through z12 will eventually be a five once we get them santo and myself correct mr joseph yes correct oh. is that okay Good. santo thank you again so um okay. i'll just start the presentation by just giving you um, a little bit of um photographs of of the, where the building is i'm not sure how many how many members of the board are familiar with the, the site. Um, this is, as Mr. Joseph indicated, uh, a existing one and a half story structure, if you will. Oh, all right, let me get my screen share here. Does that work? Do we have that? Yes, Steve? we have We're it. Good. Okay, great. Yeah, we have it. So it's a one of a two-story structure. The former use of the of the site uh, was a, an event hall or a, somewhat of a, a, a nightclub at times, but mainly an event hall. This is the main structure here that's on approximately like a, a 50 by 120, 130 lot. Uh, this building next to it was a one or two family wood frame structure on a 25 by 100 lot. 
uh, giving us a total square footage of just under eight, uh, just over 8,000 square feet for the lot itself. I wanted to point out these uh, photographs because I think it's important when we get a little bit closer to the actual building design to just kind of get a, so the board can get a feel for uh, what uh, motivated and what uh, generated the, 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 the form of the structure. Uh, this is a, a, has a very unique opportunity here. It's a very unique site uh, where uh, this being MLK Drive um, and this uh, is, is Clinton Ave. And it has a, a very uh, unique plaza uh, between Clinton Ave and MLK Drive that we uh, try to um, kind of work the building to focus on the plaza. Um, the lower level, when you actually, when we get a little further into presentation, of course, the lower level uh, is uh, the first floor is, um, retail space. And again, to hopefully revitalize this plaza, you can see how the kind of the plaza is, is somewhat stagnant with a couple of uh, planters uh, in the middle of the plaza. Um, the building we believe is gonna, you know, certainly uh, add some activity to this plaza, whether it be outdoor dining space or uh, some, um, other types of activity that will be related to the to the uh, retail um, retail stores. So um, I'll move forward now, if I could, with the actual drawing presentation. So um, sheet number Z uh, Z one is uh, again here is the total survey. You can see the, our our lot our initial lot was this piece. So that's where that two-story uh, black brick building is, and then the 25 by 100 lot is here. Uh, let me zoom in here. <clears throat> so uh, these bubbles are where actually the, the variance, the or de deviation was eliminated. Um, so we, the building is completely conforming as was indicated earlier. Um, we have uh, again, just under, uh, just over 8,000 square foot lot. The building is a, uh, Total of a height of 55 feet, five stories. We have a four over one structure or four floors of residential and one floor of commercial. Um, there are um, the rear yard setback uh, is was identified um, by the the distance from the uh, from the right of way. Since we're working on one rear yard for this site, even though we have two right of ways utilizing Martin Luther King as the main um, main street or the main frontage. Uh, I'll I can show you um, in just a, um, a minute how we identified uh, the rear yard, rear yard setbacks. So rear yard um, for the main part of the building, the first floor, uh, ground floor is 95 feet to, the, to the, the, the final depth of the building. And then the upper floors uh, are 85 feet. Uh, there is no parking required for lots under 9,000 square feet. As I indicated, we're 8,022. Um, bicycle um, spots are internal on the first floor. I'll, we'll go over that momentarily. And uh, as to the mix, the, con the unit mix, um, well, let me just point, I'll point out very quickly that we have a roof deck of um, eight of 2,445 square feet. That was increased from the initial uh, package that the board has. And it was generated from our community board meeting that they actually thought, felt that we, they wanted act, actually for us to reduce the green roof and add some uh, additional um, roof deck that out, outdoor space on the roof that the residents would be able to use. In addition, uh, they suggested that we add a dog um, run, which we did. So uh, that number is bubbled because it was increased from uh, the previous, uh, again, the previous uh, planning board uh, submission. Uh, our units range from 609 square feet to 910 square feet. There are a total of 21 bedrooms and one baths. Um, Four one bedroom, one bath with dens, two two bedrooms, one bath, and eight two bedroom, two baths. Uh, so this is a um, our site plan, and, and essentially it's the it's the roof plan. 
of the project. You can see how now we had initially had this as green roof with a, a, a five foot walkway here for to access the second stairwell. But the roof is now increased and um, the roof deck is actually is now increased. It is stepped back, step, I believe it's set back eight feet uh, along Martin Luther King and five feet along Clinton. So um, for, for obvious reasons, we don't want people concerned about people's safety as, uh, as uh, on the roof deck as well as uh, on the ground. Uh, this we converted into the dog run. As, er, as I was um, mentioning before on where the rear yard setback was determined, as you can see that the only spot that we're really concerned about because this frontage is only 50 feet, a little over 50 feet. So that doesn't qualify for the rear yard setback, but this one does. And uh, 95 feet is what is what is required. We have 95 feet to the first floor and then 85 feet to the upper floors. So that's where I, that's an additional 10 foot setback. We have a total setback for the rear yard of 85 uh, for the 100 foot uh, deep lot. Um, some of the other comments from the community board were, were tree placements and things of that nature, which we Yeah, Dennis, uh, b before we leave this, this page, I'll, I'll just speak to that. So, so we included four street trees. That's what's required by the city. Um, we're still going to do that, but the community asked us to relocate uh, two of these trees so as not to block any of the commercial signage. Uh, the commercial component of this building is very important to the community. And we do have a unique opportunity here with that plaza over there to relocate the two trees um, uh, furthest away from the plaza to somewhere closer to the plaza on the plaza or, or even on Clinton somewhere. So we're going to work with Cameron and we're going to work with the, the city forester uh, to relocate the, those two, two trees somewhere to be determined. So as not to block the commercial uh, signage. Okay, uh, the next couple of slides are, are just uh, standard details for, for our um, M, for MUA and for, uh, drop this down a little bit, and for the uh, site plan work. So the first floor, um, as mentioned, is uh, mainly um, retail. And we have 4,439 square feet of total retail, which includes this strip of uh, the one next to it and then one in the corner. Uh, the lobby uh, is very generous. We wanted to try to utilize not just, um, again, we have a, a four, 500, uh, sorry, five, 577 square foot fitness center, but the lobby uh, is also looked at as a possible uh, workspace for uh, individuals that may be working from home. And this has not been fitted out yet or designed, but the concept here is to give enough space that could potentially be uh, looked at as a as an interior workspace, um, mail room, package room, and then back uh, and ele elevator, and then the back of house is just behind the elevator. Uh, second means of egress exits, uh, one means of egress rather exits out of Clinton. Second means of egress on this side of the building uh, to MLK. Again, total commercial space is four thousand four thirty nine and total lobby uh, 13, 1,368 square feet. Uh, our basic layout, are identi they're identical floors uh, going up the building. Uh, you can see um, our, uh, this is the corner unit that faces that uh, plaza. Um, so we have a, a total, um, let's see. I believe it's eight. Eight, eight, eight or nine units of floor, uh, and every floor has that um, that that basic unit unit mix that I was referring to before. Uh, what's unique about the layouts, uh, and then we all know about how important outdoor space is, that we've tried to um, give every unit some sort of outdoor space, either a walkout balcony, which you see here of the second floor, um, an, um, or walkout patio, should I say? Of four by eight walkout patio, uh, walkout balconies on upper floors, which you see uh, both here and in these units uh, in the rear, and then we have the uh, Juliet balconies that uh, you with sliding glass doors that you can open up and, and step outside. Um, so we've tried to accomplish as well as the over two thousand square foot 
uh, roof deck. So try to accomplish uh, and, and to um, provide as much outdoor outdoor spaces as we could with, with the design. And same thing on, again, the upper floors are the same. You've looked at the roof plan. It's essentially a black and white copy of, of the site plan. Um, we have listed on the roof plan the various different greening uh, elements that we'll be using, the, the trays and the screening elements around mechanical equipment. And Dennis, while we're on this page, um, what, what type of uh, what type of HVAC are we using here? Well, um, okay, let's go back to uh, the floor plan. So uh, the units that are are along most of the units along MLK will be PTAC units. The units in this corner of MLK and Clinton uh, will be mini split systems. So right now, actually, when we get over to the elevations, you can actually see how we handled or how we um, kind of camouflaged the, um, um, the louver system. And of course, because we have um, the design incorporates a lot of glass in these corners and walk out and these uh, Juliet balconies, we didn't have the opportunity to continue to use a PTAC system. So we've, we're, we'll be using a, a mini split, um, like an LG system uh, for those units that are that are apparent the, that the the windows and the outdoor space is paramount. Okay, so uh, this is again this is the elevations on MLK. Uh, you can see that these the louvers will will be below these windows um, and they'll be designed uh, within the window component. So these will have P tacks here, here, and here. And then again because of the the glass. Um, the dominated glass feature, uh, we will be using um, a split system for, for, the, for the eight units in, in this, the four in this corner and the four on, um, and the four on this, this corner, rather. So, now this is the building elevation. Um, I could point out, again, if you see the bubble in this, this spot here and these locations, is where we reduce the 11 inches in in uh, building height to uh, eliminate that that deviation. Um, Stephen, you want to say anything about that guy? Yeah. So uh, one of the strongest comments from the community is that they did not like the name of the building. So for the record, the name of, that will not be the name of the building. The Verge will will not be the name of the building. Um, there will be something else there. That's just a placeholder for now. Yeah. Okay. All right. This is again um, identified the reduction in in, in uh, building height. Uh, the materials um, maybe it might be a little bit easier to see the material selection in the rendering when we get to that. Uh, but you can see it's a combination of brick. We're using a composite cement board for these design elements, and a corrugated steel, galvanized steel for the main uh, corner focal section. Uh, we'll be using a, a, aluminum panels down here on the lower section um, behind uh, that that'll be um, cladding the concrete uh, columns at the base. Okay, this the rear or uh, this I believe this is the south facing elevation uh, will be stucco. Um, the described lines uh, if you will, will have uh, will be slightly angled to try to mimic the design angles of the building. And then you have the rear elevation, which will be um, a um, hardy plank, except for this little section, which is the uh, the lower level of that 25 by 100 um, lot in uh, on the south side. That will be stuck over. Okay, so uh, here's our rendering. I guess you get a better feel for the elements and better feel for how uh, we believe that that plaza could be activated. Um, so uh, again, these are our concrete panels. This is a, a standard brick in a, in a um, running bond. Our galvanized uh, um, corrugated metal panels and then our, our glass components. And 
Uh, Dennis, are, are you able, um, well, after you finish the, the materials, if you could go to an overhead so we could talk about the, the awning briefly. Yeah, okay. So um, the, the, again, the, the material board, um, standard brick um, panel, standard brick veneer in a, in a running bond. We've all seen the Hardy Plank um, application. Um, it speaks for itself. It's tremendously durable and long lasting. And so it's, it's um, a, um, a good facade element, especially in the rears of the building. Uh, these will be your concrete uh, composite panels, stucco, and then our aluminum selection uh, would be the black aluminum for all the glass and our, our lighting. And then the corrugated steel would be, would be um, this one down here. So, and then this is our lighting selections. Um, okay, so you wanted to go to the uh, Z. Just an overhead so we could, so we could take a look at the- um, This one? Um, yeah, that, that's a good one. So if, if the board can see there's a dotted line and, and Dennis, if you could just indicate that with your, with your cursor yeah, there. Yeah, um, this dotted line, it kind of starts at zero and, and, and verge, I don't want to use verge, but uh, it, um, it extends out to the corner about eight feet and then goes back to almost zero here. That is the, con that is the, actually will be concrete, but it'll be wrapped with a, a metal cladding. That is the overhang, um, angled overhang at the, at the, the second floor level. Yeah, so so that does encroach into the public right of way. We will need a, a franchise ordinance for that. That's indicated in the engineer's report. Um, but uh, as you can see, De Dennis and the client worked very hard on the design of this building um, to kind of utilize the the plaza as, as much as possible. And that that awning is is part of that that design. Um. I think that's all we have. Um, let's see. Yeah. So, so Dennis, I think that I think that concludes yeah, our. Other um, than, yeah. Other than uh, we have we have uh, received the engineer's report and and have no problem with all the comments in the engineering report, um, and we will comply to that to those comments. So. Yeah. So so that concludes uh, that concludes our our direct testimony. I just wanted to. To recap, um, the what came out of the community meeting again. We did meet with the council person, and we did meet with the um, Jackson uh, Jackson Hill Main Street. Uh, overall, meeting was very positive, especially related to the design. They did ask us to expand the rooftop amenity, which is unusual. Typically, when, when I meet with neighbors and community associations, they they don't want a building to have as large of a roof deck as this, but they wanted that expanded. They suggested a dog run. Um, so we accommodated that. They did ask us to try and relocate two of these trees. So the commercial frontage is, is activated. They wanted us to remove the name uh, of the building and, and use something else. Applicant uh, agrees to all of those. There were questions about affordability. This building is not providing any affordable units. Um, my client is going to have a conversation with, with Jackson Hill Main Street uh, about something with the commercial units, but that's not, that's not really relevant for tonight because nothing's being agreed to related to that. And then um, parking came up as well and citywide issue parking is, um, parking is challenging everywhere. So that, that was a concern as well, but parking is not, not required for this site. Okay, thank you. Um... Mr. Davino, uh, the street trees that are going to be relocated, which ones are they? Uh, um, right now, we're, we're referring to these two that are closest to the building that theoretically could block uh, commercial signage. Okay. And if we're, if we're unable to relocate them somewhere to the satisfaction of, of staff and forestry, then they will remain where they are. Okay. All right. Um, the the only question I have, um, it's really not even a question, but uh, the stucco finish uh, is, well, first of all, is that a smooth stucco? Yes. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, I won't require it, but I would, uh, you know, ask the applicant to consider reaching out to the city's mural program for that, uh, that smooth 
stucco finish. Yeah, I, I think that's something the applicant would be would be very interested in. Um, so okay, Mr. Chairman, the only concern I would have that if I'm not sure if this is in the same zone, but if this property gets redeveloped, theoretically could block would could block that that um, that mural. But I guess if it does, sure. it does. Um, but yeah, that would be an, um, a great opportunity to do something on that south wall. Yeah, um, I, I mean, as far as you know, I know there's no. You know, nothing's proposed yet there. So, um, you know, in the interim, it would be a nice, uh, nice thing to look at. Yep. Um, yeah, that's it for me. I have no other questions. Anybody else? I may I have a question. Uh, Go ahead, Matt. The, uh, you were speaking about the signage being a placeholder Did that, without referring to the signs at the top of the building. Mm -hmm. it, it refers to anything that says the verge um the community did not like the name the verge at at all so anything related anything that says verge needs needs to go i'm not sure if it was discussed but a sign at that height is a variance um and the number is probably a variance since it's for the building we really only permit signs at the tops of buildings for hotel uses, uh, which this is not, correct? Correct. Um, so we'll, we'll remove it altogether then. Uh, we, didn't, we didn't identify that as a variance. It didn't come up um, in, re in review, but if, if that's a variance, then we'll, we'll remove it altogether. Okay. Yeah, signs are relegated to the first floor uh, for the redevelopment plan. Thanks, Matt. Good catch. Um, and Mr. Joseph, I do uh, just ask that any changes to the plans, uh, any updates be uh, submitted for um, the signature set. Of course. Okay, thank you. Uh, so anybody else, any questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Joseph. That's your presentation? That concludes our presentation. All right, thank you. Mr. Davino. if you could stop sharing your screen, we'll open it up for public comment. Thank you. Uh, okay, anybody from the public, if you'd like to comment, please raise your hands. If you are calling in and you'd like to comment, you can press star nine to raise your hands. Anybody from the public, if you'd like to comment, Promoting please raise your hands. Okay, thank you. Yes, I'm shy. Oz. Uh, do you have the ability to start your video? No. Okay. Um, I guess you can take it from here. Okay. Uh, if we could, let's just swear you in, please. Yes. Okay. First, could you state and spell your full name, sir? Yes. My name is Shai Bodansky, S H A Y A B O D A N S K Y. Okay, and Mr. Bodansky, do you verify that you are who you just stated you are and you will consider your testimony as if it is given under oath tonight, since I cannot see you? Yes. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Bodansky, we have five minutes for you. Yes, first I wanna compliment, it looks like a very beautiful design. Um, and I think it will add a lot to that area, especially that it's a very busy intersection and it brings a lot of, um, good development to that area. My question to the to the architect, developer, or the attorney, I saw on the pictures this outdoor seatings. I would like to know if that's gonna be permanent, will it be there, will it be for the public, for the private, and how will it be maintained? That's a very, okay. um, I'm sorry. Um, no, Steve, Mr. I, Joseph, I before you answer, yeah. um, Mr. Badansky, do you have any other questions? I like to you know list the questions and just so we oh. don't eat your time up. Yeah, th that's that's all my questions. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Joseph. So th that's a very good question. I apologize. We didn't, we didn't make that very clear during the presentation. The, the plaza is is public property. Um, so any seating outside would require a sidewalk cafe permit. Um, and, and that's regulated that way. But the plaza is, is public property. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bodansky, anything else? No, that's it. Thank you very much. 
Okay, thank you, sir. All right, if anybody else from the public wants to comment, please raise your hand. And if you're calling in, once again, press star nine to raise your hand. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, seeing no more public, I move to close the public. Seconded. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Um, all right, so I'm covering for Erica on this one and um, basically just asking that the applicant agree to the conditions stated in the staff report dated April 6th, 2021. Uh, the applicant and I have reviewed the staff report and have reviewed the engineer's report and the applicant agrees to all conditions. Okay, and we're adding two conditions. One, 11 for the exploration of mur a mural on the stucco and a 12th condition for the removal of the signage above the first floor. Is that Correct. It? The applicant agrees. Okay, super. Um, and with that, staff recommends approval. Okay, thanks, Cameron. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P20-127 as presented here tonight. Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded for approval. Okay. So, Vice Chair Dr. Gonzalez. Aye. All right. Commissioner Desai. Aye. All right. Commissioner Horton. Aye. Commissioner Allen. Aye. All right. Council President Waterman. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. All right, motion carries all in favor with conditions. Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, Bridget, thank you. Bridget, do you want to take five before we uh, we move on? Sure, that's great. Thank you've you. Had a, yeah, you've had a long day already. <laughs> okay. All right, good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Domino. Okay, everybody, uh, it's 6.55. Uh, Bridget, is five good or do you want 10? Uh, but whatever you want, Chris. You can make it five and it'll probably be eight by the time everybody gets back. Stephen, I just uh, want to remind no, you. <laughs> Stephen, just want to remind you, I'm making a note that uh, A5, we really don't have it yet. So just uh, remind yourself, because I know you're on here a lot tonight. A5 yes. for P20127 is going to be Z9 through Z12 inclusive. I'm going to try and send that to you while we're on break. Great. Because if okay, I might. Thank be, you. Uh, okay. All right. I'll be back. Thank you. All right, everybody, let's take a five minute break. Uh, we'll come back on at 7.01. Thanks, Chris. Thank you.
Okay, could we come to order again, everybody? 701, sir. <laughs> 701. <laughs> uh, I don't have my headphones on. Me neither, now I'm putting them in. What is going on with the headphones here? Okay. <laughs> Bluetooth disconnected. Come on. Okay, there we go. All right. Um, all right, let's pick it up with item 14 on the agenda is uh, case P20-146 is a minor site plan for 246 Webster Avenue. Okay, great. Stephen Joseph for the applicant. Um, this application was also carried, but we should confirm we have those no notices and enter them into evidence. Thank you, Council. <clears throat> Chairman, we are in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to the application at 246 Webster Avenue. It was noticed for the March 23rd meeting. All does appear to be in order. We preserved that notice and carried the matter for this evening. So we can mark that as A1 for the record. Thank you, Council. A1. A1. Okay, great. Um, so this is 246 Webster Avenue. The properties on the east side of Webster Avenue between South Street and Bower Street. Um, this this project's a little strange only because of why we're here. This is in the Webster Avenue redevelopment plan, which, as this board knows, is in the process of being um, re removed. That that hasn't happened yet, and this application was was submitted um, lo long before that process started. So what we're proposing here is um, exactly what's permitted under the redevelopment plan, which is a, a four-story, two-family home. In order to accomplish that, all we need is minor site plan approval. Um, so let's let's get Raul sworn in and we'll start going through the plans. Hey, Mr. Cabato. Yep, I see your hands. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. State and spell your full name for the record, please. Sure. Raul Cabato, R-A-U-L-C-A-B-A-T-O. Thank you. Mr. Cabato, good evening. Uh, we've good qualified evening. you numerous times. Your license is current tonight? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you, you're qualified. Okay. Let me share my screen. I'm sorry. Can everybody see this screen? We can, yes. Okay. Okay, okay so the project is located in the um, Webster Avenue redevelopment zone. The proposed project shall consist of demolishing the existing two-story structure and constructing a uh, new 40 foot tall, four story, two family dwelling with two car garage on the first floor. Also proposed are a 10 foot wide curb cut, driveway and garage door. One street trees proposed at the side. I'm sorry, I'm not sure if anybody else. Mr. Yeah, yeah we lost him. Mr. Raul. Bada? Yeah, we lost him. He'll probably get right back on. Roll. Mr. Cabato, do we have you? Maybe Steven, do you? Uh, yeah, um, I would ask the board if we give him a couple of minutes, I'll reach out to him. If, if not, we, we can move on to the next application in order to keep moving along. Okay. 
Um, Maybe he went back off and is coming back on. Sometimes that works. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm plugging and plugging back in. Yeah. <laughs> At the least resistance for me. <laughs> Where do we have the music coming from? I hear music in there. I thought that was coming from you, Chris, because your box, no. your box was lit up. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it's not me. It's nice music. <laughs> Here's Rahul. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Uh, That's okay, Rahul. You were saying also proposed are a 10 foot wide curb cut driveway and garage door. One street tree is proposed at the, and then we lost you. <laughs> Thanks, the Bridget. Side. Thank you, Bridget. <laughs> um, one street tree was proposed um, on the south side of the, uh, the property. And, uh, and Rahul, we need to get you to uh, share your screen again. Oh, sure. I don't know what's going on. Okay. All right. So, um, sheet A100 uh, shows the first and second floor uh, layouts, which comprise the first duplex unit. The garage for two cars shall be on the first floor. There shall also be a recreation room in the rear, uh, which shall be part of the dwelling unit above and accessed via an interior stair. The second floor shall consist of three bedrooms and two bathrooms. Uh, the, lower duplex, um, uh, uh, the lower duplex unit shall be approximately 2,120 square feet in total area. Uh, sheet A101 shows the third floor plan and fourth floor plan, which comprise the second duplex unit. This unit shall have three bedrooms and two bathrooms on the lower level. The upper level shall consist of one master bedroom with a bathroom, a living entertainment room, and a toilet uh, for, you know, for use for the living room. Uh, the, the second duplex unit shall have an area of over 2,800 square feet. A roof deck is also proposed. The upper duplex unit shall have exclusive use of the roof deck, which is over 780 square feet in area. There shall be green roof elements at each end of the roof deck. Uh, the green roof elements consist of self-draining tra plant trays. This particular system was selected for its ease of installation, reasonable cost, and easy maintenance. The modular nature of the system ensures that replacing parts become effortless. The benefits include stormwater management, reduction of the heat island effect, reduction of energy usage, noise reduction, in addition to the visual and aesthetic benefits. Details of the green roof element can be found on G C, uh, sheet Z102. Okay, in terms of materials, the front facade shall be clad partially with brick. There are also Oriel windows, which shall be clad in metal panels. All other elevations shall be clad in fiber cement siding. Samples of the proposed materials can be found on sheet A400. Um, that concludes my presentation. All right, thank you, Mr. Cabato. Raul's our only uh, uh, witness tonight. That concludes our uh, direct testimony for the, for the record. Okay, thank you, Mr. Joseph. Um, I don't have any questions, but um, Eddie, do you want to uh, talk about the two car garage? Yes, I do. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Chairman Nixon. Um, once again, the two car garage, is it for the only one of those units or they share different units? We have three bedroom unit and you have a two bedroom unit. So th this, is, um, this project is, is obviously designed as a, as a condo. Um, and 
the intention is for each unit to have one half of the garage, one parking space for each car. I, I agree with you. Um, this is not the most ideal situation. This is um, what, what the ordinance in, in encourages. Um, I've had clients that sought variances in the past to do side by side parking. Um, you do need a, you do need a variance to do that because you don't have the appropriate amount of depth for for the garage. Uh, if this is a condo project, which it, it should be, we we have standard language in our master deeds that we do about sharing of keys and and stuff like that. Um, but the, the unit owners would have would have to work together. Um, they would have to work together. Yeah. No, I have no more questions on this. I just don't really um, see how you're going to have a three-bedroom unit, meaning that you're going to wind up with a family there, you're going to wind up with uh, teenagers there at one time or beginning drivers that allow them to use your car to move out in and out of a space. This concept makes no... Um, Sorry about that. Um, that. It's just a, a thing for trouble. But, um, Commissioner Last, uh, I mean, um, Chairman Lasting, I um, move on. I don't think uh, we address this again. All right, thanks, Ed. Uh, anybody else? Any questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Joseph. All right, so at this time, let's open it up for public comment. Uh, if you would like to comment on this application, I see a number of hands raised. Um, please raise your hand. If you are calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Promoting Curly Bells. Hello, Kira Lee. Yes, hello. I'm sorry. Um, can you hear me? I'm having problems with this Zoom. We if you can, can hear you, we can see you. Great. I'm so sorry about that, that technical issue. Um, yes, my That's name okay. is no Ms. Bowles. Ms. Bowles, would you raise your right hand to be sworn then? Thank you. You swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I affirm, I do, yes. Thank you. And could you state and spell your full name, please? Absolutely. My full name is Kira Lee Bowles, K-I-R-R-A-L-E-Y, surname Bowles, B-O-W-L-E-S. Thank you very much. Ms. Bowles, good evening. We have five minutes for you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Chairman. Thank um, you. First of all, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to address the planning board this evening. Um, I live with my husband and son on Sherman Avenue, just a block back from where the proposed development is. Um, I object to the development and just have a few quick points to make. Um, I certainly don't envisage taking up the five minutes. The first is that I think there are certain inconsistencies or inaccuracies in the paperwork that's been submitted. Uh, for instance, section 10 of the application form states that the current residence is three stories and 35 feet, such that the only sort of increase in height that's being requested is an extra sort of five foot plus the, uh, the eight foot for the roof deck. If you sort of walk by that uh, building, you can tell quite quickly it's a two story dwelling, albeit on a, a small sort of foundation and certainly not 35 feet. And nowhere else in the documentation could I identify how tall it is exactly. So, so that was a concern, you know, the extent to which, um, you know, decisions have been made or people haven't engaged on the basis of that, um, you know, statement that the existing dwelling is 35 feet and it only looks like a minor uh, change that's being proposed. My second point is that I'm a member of the Riverview Neighborhood Association, and this has not been consulted with the association. Um, I think it would be useful for you know, residents in the area to be made aware of this, uh, of this proposal. 
My third point is that um, the dwelling that's being proposed is a four-story residence on an incredibly narrow block of land. Um, if you look around you know, this area, not just Webster Avenue um, between Bowers and South, but the area generally, most of the homes here are two or three stories. Um, and my concern is with this proposal, you're looking at an incredibly sort of tall you know, building on a very narrow space, which would essentially overshadow the other buildings in the area um, and be out of step with the character of the area overall. Um, certainly, I think, you know, I'm not against development. I, I don't mean to give that impression, but I think it needs to be sensitive to the character of an area. And whereas I feel like, you know, these four story dwellings are certainly more appropriate and fitting on, on busier streets, like, you know, on Palisade or on Central, here in this little pocket of Webster Avenue, um, I think it would just be kind of, you know, looming far too large, particularly if there's that roof deck as well. Um, we're talking about a building of what would essentially be 48 feet, um, you know, if you add the appurtenance of, of eight feet that's being requested. And I guess my final point is uh, just, you know, I'm, I'm a resident in the Heights. I came here, you know, to, to you know, to, to, to you know, be with my family, to start my family here. I didn't want to live in Hoboken or downtown Jersey City. The Heights has a very different aesthetic. And I guess my concern is, um, you know, if this proposal is, is accepted and allowed through, there's a floodgate argument. You know, what's to stop other developers coming in with these, you know, big dwellings that are out of step with the, the character of the area? They would have a legitimate expectation that they could claim sort of variances of, of you know, extra eight feet or an extra, you know, few feet here and there. And the whole sort of, you know, the landscape, the, uh, you know, the, 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 the character of the area would change as a result. Um, so they're my, my uh, reasons for having concerns with this application and, and objecting to it this evening. Thank you so much for this opportunity again. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bowles. Um, yeah, I I agree. I, I'm a few blocks away on Hutton Street here. Uh, so, hi, neighbor. Um, <laughs> nice to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, it, it, this is permitted. This is, you know, exactly what the plan calls for. I, I don't want to make Mr. Joseph's case. Uh, Mr. Joseph, if you want to respond to anything, you're more than welcome. Sure. So uh, we, we are not requesting any variances. The, this is this zoning has been in place for a, a very long time. Um, this is what is permitted here. And the applicant is, in fact, making the property more conforming. It's an existing three family dwelling, um, which is not which is not permitted currently. So we're reducing the density by one unit. Um, it is it is four stories. That's I understand that's unusual because the majority of Jersey City is R1, which is three stories. But this is ex exactly what, what the ordinance, what the law says we're, we're allowed to do here. There's, there's no variances being sought, which is why we did not um, meet with RNA. We, we have met with RNA on many projects where we're, we're seeking variances. Um, this is simply a, a site plan approval. And we, we certainly encourage you know, everybody, any developer to meet with the Neighborhood Association. Um, you know, RNA is you know, very accessible. They're easy to reach out to. So uh, in the future, we do encourage that. Um, okay, so I'm thank you, Ms. Bowles. Gabriel Elizondo. Gabriel? Hello, Ms. Elizondo. Do we have you? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Elizondo. I'm here now. Okay, could you turn on your video? Is that possible? Yes, sir. Thank you. We appreciate it. Yeah. Okay, raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Would you state and spell your full name for the record? Gabriel Elizondo, spelled G-A-B-R-I-E-L, last name E-L-I-Z-O-N-D-O. Thank you. Mr. Elizondo, good evening. We have five minutes for you. Okay, thank you. Uh, commissioners, thank you. Um, I, I, um, I did speak to uh, Jocelyn Patrick, the president of the Riverview Neighborhood Association, and she did confirm that uh, this development has not been brought to them. Of course, it's not uh, 
they're not obligated to, but I just want to reaffirm that uh, that it has not been brought to the RNA. Um, I know it's a minor site plan, but as someone that lives a half block away, it's not minor uh, to me. Um, I think that while, while I also am for development and I think the project on paper as presented, you know, it's fine. Um, I, I feel like of course, um, it's just really out of, out of touch with the neighborhood as someone that lives a half block away. Um, and if there's no, if there's no variances, then why are you even, I, I I'm a little confused. If there's no variances, then why is it even having to be addressed here at the, with the with the commissioners? Uh, maybe that question can be answered uh, after. Uh, but bottom line is, I feel like I, I've supported a lot of variances on Palisade Avenue with high-profile projects, um, and I've regretted it afterwards after I see them built in the area. And so I'm basically saying, I live in the area. I've supported and I've gone before the commission before pre-COVID uh, and supported things that were very high contra highly controversial projects on Palisades that I actually supported the variances and, and I regret it. And I don't wanna see this, this, the same mistake happen in a residential neighborhood half block from me. I know they're saying there's no variances. I know that, that, uh, that uh, Webster is a much different street than Palisade is. So it's comparing apples or oranges. But with that said, I feel that we really have to uh, not just rubber stamp uh, some of these projects. And while I appreciate the development and I appreciate trying to improve uh, a structure and it, by the plans, it looks like it will be an improvement, at least as you pa pass by the, the sidewalk. Uh, certainly someone that lives next door, I just, or lives half block away, I just really don't, I think it's just does not conform with, with the area. Um, and that's, that's all I have to say. And I just uh, thank you, commissioners. I hope you uh, give that some consideration. And again, um, I know that they do not, are not obligated to go before the RNA in any way, shape, or form, but I just wanted to reaffirm that talking to the president, Russell and Patrick, she just did email me and said that uh, she has no record of these developers approaching the RNA in any way, in any way about this project. Thank you for your time. And I hope you'll consider um, reevaluating this project. Thank you, Mr. Elizondo, we appreciate it. And um, while we have you, um, the, the reason this comes before the board, uh, Webster Avenue had a redevelopment plan in place that, oh my God, I don't even know how many years it was in place, but uh, it's in the process of um, finishing up. The, the plan has you know, reached its goals and it's, uh, you know, city council has to, go ahead and, and I don't know the exact terminology I'm looking for, but the, the plan will be no more uh, very soon. But that's why it's in front of us. Uh, usually we wouldn't even see something like this, you know, unless it was in a redevelopment plan. Uh, Chairman, if I may um, go ahead, give Matt. an update. So this project, which was scheduled originally for uh, the 23rd of March um, was submitted prior to this ordinance going before council. Council actually adopted an ordinance to repeal uh, Webster Avenue or convert it into a regular zone district, which if this applicant filed now, um, they would not be before this board because it's a one and two family home. Um, they are simply going through the process that they had started uh, and they are before the board under it uh, because of the time of application, it was a re it's still considered a redevelopment plan for, for this applicant. Uh, so I, right. I, the project is also over 5,000 um, square feet in gross floor area. So it would still require minor site plan approval, yeah. no, no matter what. And, and I, I did want to apologize to the community. We, we did not reach out to them. We did not meet with them. We didn't think that this, this as of right project rise to that level. So I, I'm, I apologize. I'm sorry for that. Um, and that's, I just wanted to acknowledge that we, we don't disagree with those comments. All right. Thank you, Mr. Joseph. Stephen, I didn't realize the square footage of the project. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, we still have a number of hands raised. Let's uh, promoting let's Claire. To bring up the more, uh, promoting Claire uh, Gret. Would you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay, I cannot hear you, and yet you don't appear to be muted. Can you either, can you say something? Uh, okay, I do. there you go. That's fine. Okay. Just state and spell your full name for the record. Uh, Mark Garrett, spelled M-A-R-K, last name G-U-E-R-E-T-T-E. -E -T -T -E. Thank you. And uh, Mr. Garrett, in one second, uh, just so the record's clear, um, this is Mark Garrett, not Claire Garrett. Correct. This is my wife's computer and her account. Not a problem. I understand. Um, okay, we have five minutes for you, sir. All right. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Uh, and, and thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I just want to say that I wholeheartedly support all of the comments that have been made thus far with regard to this project. Um, and uh, I'll just let that stand rather than reiterate them. Um, I think overall the design of the building does not really keep in line with the, the, with the rest of the block. I just, I, I live a couple of doors down and just renovated the, the front of my uh, house, my single family house. <laughs> um, and we restored a lot of the old architecture. And uh, I think that was the point of the redevelopment plan to, to, to begin with, um, which incidentally uh, was adopted in 1979. Um, but uh, beyond, beyond that and beyond what I think have been misleading plans, uh, I don't think that that's a three uh, family house. Uh, if it is, it's no doubt an illegal three family. It really is a two story building and um, uh, I've never been inside so I can't really speak uh, to the validity of those assumptions, but anyway. Um, I have a couple of specific questions. Does uh, the height, uh, when, when, when you're proposing a particular height on a building, does it typically not include the parapet? Um, because that adds an additional three feet to the 40 and the, uh, the additional uh, uh, footage on the, the structure on the roof, you know, takes it up to 48. And I'm very much concerned that we're just simply providing precedence for future developments to continue to see the building uh, sizes rise on our block, which very much is a residential block. So that's uh, my first question. Um, my second question is whether or not the floor of the deck, the roof deck uh, is in line with the roof of the building, the 40 foot uh, height, uh, or if, it's, if there's any rise above that. Uh, and the third question I have has to do with the, the, the garage. Um, currently the parking is on the other side of the lot and so the curb cut is there. And is the proposed curb cut uh, in the project, uh, would that then uh, restore the curb on the other side of the lot so that we're not losing a street parking space? Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Joseph, do you want to address those, those questions? Sure, um, so the... The roof line is measured, the height of the building is measured to the roof line, the bulkhead parapet are, are not, not included in that measurement. Um, I'll, I'll let Raul say a few words about that, that and the roof deck. Um, I did want to address the, the curb cut. Uh, we're going to have the curb cut size that's permitted by the ordinance, which is 10 feet. Um, any excess that's there or that's remaining, it'll be filled in and it'll, it'll be a maximum of, of 10 feet. So it's not going to be an additional curb cut or an extension of, of that. Um, Raul, can you say a few words on the height and on the... Uh... Sure. Um, I might also want to add that we are going to be installing a street tree where that existing curb cut is. So that sidewalk, that entire sidewalk will be uh, restored, uh, repaired, uh, reconstructed. Um, also, as far as the height, I mean, the, uh, the, the, the roof deck, the roof, the actual roof itself has a slight slope 
the roof deck system that we selected will level um, it, it. It will be level and it will adjust to the slope of the roof. So to answer your question, the roof will be sloped slightly and, uh, and, and that's more for water drainage. And then the, the roof deck itself is gonna be level. It's not gonna be more than a foot above uh, the finished uh, roof. And, the, um, and there's gonna be a, you know, a parapet that's a minimum height 42 inches. Uh, the height that we measured was to the um, height of the, the, the roof structure and not to the height of the parapet. The, um, the other comment I heard was about the, the legal use of the existing buildings. I, I, I checked the tax records. There, it is a it is a legal three family building. At the inception of this project, um, my client had a decision to make. The two options on, on the table were to wait until the Webster Avenue redevelopment plan was removed, and then request a, a, a D variance for the expansion of that non conforming three family building or, or to pursue an as of right project. Um, my client opted for the, for the as of right two family four story um, project. Okay, thank you, sir. And yeah, just for the record that um, the, the heights are measured from the, the roof line, not the roof deck line. It's the actual roof line that's uh, legally required. Okay, so let's continue on with public comment. I promoted Joe Rosenbaum. Mr. Rosenbaum, raise your right hand to be sworn, please. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state and spell your full name for the record. It is uh, Joe Rosenbaum, J O E. R O S E N B A U M. Thank you. Mr. Rosenbaum, good evening. We have five minutes for you. Thank you so much, Chairman. Um, I'm Thank actually going to start out with a question because uh, I did some research on my own and I'm really interested in the, the whole Webster Avenue uh, redevelopment because that idea, you know, in concept actually makes perfect sense and it's, you know, given the state of the, of the street. But I have something here that talks about it was supposed to. Uh, uh, end on November 4th, 2020. And I even believe someone earlier in the call mentioned some sort of reference to when this was supposed to end. So I have two questions. Like my first question is when was it supposed to end? And second, if it did end, would we then be back to a kind of a standard approval process without all these guaranteed variances? Could I start there, please? Sure, no such thing as a guaranteed variance, first of all. Um, Second of all, the it's a large kind of a larger conversation that uh, if we wish to expand upon it, I, I'm happy to do so. Um, is the, the subject of expirations and redevelopment plans? Um, there is no such statute in the local redevelopment and housing law, um, and uh, it's unclear what happens when it elapses. What uh, was done was that it well. So I think an action needs to be taken um, regardless if, it, if that time expires uh, by council. And that's what, what uh, was presented to uh, any board, recommended to city council and approved by city council just uh, at the end of last month. Okay, very so well. Matt, just from a legal standpoint, currently because of when this application was filed, this is still the controlling zoning that is uh, controlling the approval process for the applicant and which this board is governed by. The fact that this board has made that referral to council and council is now taking uh, some action on that, council being the mayor and council, is of no moment for this particular application as it is pending. The board is statutorily obligated to hear the application under the Webster Ave redevelopment plan as it is written. Thank you, Council. Thank you for the explanation. No. Uh, Mr. Rosenbaum, anything else? Yes, I do have just a couple more comments to make. Uh, you know, I'm very familiar with the block um, that we are speaking about. And uh, to echo some of uh, the previous speakers, 
you know, this will be the only building on that block that that uh, it does not fit in with a single building on that block, um, which I think is uh, kind of goes against the whole, you know, premise of having consistency in, in the neighborhood and things along those lines. Um, and secondly, when it comes to the roof deck, you know, I, I don't believe there are many roof decks. I, I have the, the, the uh, you know, privilege of living in a unit where I can actually see a lot of rooftops in the area and I can only think of one other roof deck. Um, and while these are family homes, which, you know, you would not think of being disruptive, you know, I'm concerned about noise um, and uh, things that could become uh, more of a nuisance for the neighbor for the neighborhood with, uh, you know, gatherings and things like that on the rooftop deck. Um, I think that is uh, something that should be considered as well. And with that, I cede my time. Thank you, board. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Rosenbaum. We appreciate it. Um, Mr. Joseph, uh, just to, to expand on that, what is the capacity of the roof deck legally? Um, so th that would be a building code question. I think that's Raul. I, I think that's a better question for you. I, I did want to say before Raul answers that, that it's only for the use of one of the units. So it's not a situation where this is a, a common roof deck for both of the units. It's only, only one of the units will have access to this one, one family. Um, but Raul, can we can we pull up the numbers on the occupancy load? No. You're on you're on mute, Raul. So it's about 800 square feet at 200 square foot a person. That's four people. That would be the occupancy uh, because it is a two family home. I also want to point out that they are set back. That the, the roof deck is set back about from the from the street. It's about um, seven feet, and from the rear yard about twelve foot three. In addition, we're going to have planters that would also act as uh, sort of some some type of screen. Um, but the reality, <clears throat> of the occupancy of it would be you know pr primarily ju just the occupants of the building uh, of the unit. Uh, so at four bedrooms, you know, I don't, maybe eight people at the most. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cabada. All right, so let's continue on with public comment, if we could. And Mr. Cabada, if you could, thank you. Yeah, please stop sharing your screen. Promoting, promoting. Sorry, can't go ahead. Okay, Dar Darlene. It's fine. Thank you. Raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And could you state and spell your full name for the record? Sure, it's Darlene Shafron. It's D A R L E N E S H A F F R O N. Thank you. Shafron, good evening. We have five minutes for you. Great. Thank you so much. And thank you, all of you, um, for arranging this. Um, so, you know, I'm, I want to support, you know, just to, uh, you know, what other um, neighbors are saying that I, I support development. I lived in the downtown uh, Jersey City area for 10 years, and I had a 360 degree view of the entire <laughs> um, New York City skyline, uh, the west side of Jersey City. I, I could see the Statue of Liberty, and year by year, um, I saw that entire view lost. I moved to the Heights. I purchased an apartment um, right nearby. And it's um, upsetting. Um, I'm gonna take an emotional appeal here and just say it's upsetting to um, come to an area that's a neighborhood, a tree-lined uh, residential area and just even have this conversation. Um, there are options. Um, there are options to, to build. Um, I'm Like I said, I'm all in favor of development and downtown, you know, it bothered me to lose my view, but it, it all, you know, made sense in that area because it's, it's a city space and redevelopment um, means something in different areas. So, you know, just um, 
reiterating on a couple of comments that others have made, um, you know, just, you know, the last person that spoke, it, it's, it's going to be the only building if it is in, if it does get developed, it would be the only building that sticks up and really affects the skyline and alters the skyline in a neighborhood that just, it just doesn't feel right. Um, so, you know, that's, that's my appeal. I'm against it. I'm, I'm for some other development, um, you know, please, <laughs> you know, build things that are aesthetically pleasing, like your, like the plan, you know, clearly um, displays, but please consider your neighbors. Uh, be, just because you can doesn't mean you should. So, you know, you may have all of the, the green lights in the world, but we're going to live with that. Um, and it's, it's a conscious decision to do those things. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Ms. Chaperon. Promoting C. Smith. Oh, hello, can you hear me? We can. Is it possible for you to turn your video on? Oh, sure. I'll do that right now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Would you raise your right hand to be sworn? Okay. Okay, I don't see that. That's no. It. Thank you. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. And if you could state and spell your full name? Uh, yes, it's first name Craig, C R A I G, last name Smith, S M I T H. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Smith, good evening. We have five minutes for you. Okay. Yes, I'd just like to uh, say I, I, I completely agree with the uh, prior speakers tonight. I also uh, noticed that the initial application stated a building, existing building height of uh, three floors and 35 feet, which obviously isn't the case. Um, I also had a question about the Webster redevelopment plan, which you answered too, um, because I saw it indeed expired after 40 years. Um, the only thing I can really add to this is that to me, there seems to be an ambiguity in the architectural plans of the roof deck. Um, when I look at the proposed roof deck plan here, I see the rear stairwell and uh, that should be a bulkhead over it. And then near the front, there's an optional location of stair up to the roof deck. Um, when we go down here, to the other diagrams, we see a cross section that indicates the rear stairwell, nothing about the front stairwell. And then go down a bit more and we start seeing the elevation plans. The elevation plans indicate some structure on top of the uh, uh, south side of the roof towards the front. Um, it doesn't identify what it is, but there's a slope to it and it ends at the roof line, but there's no indication of a bulkhead at the rear. So my question then is what's going on with the rooftop bulkheads? Um, is the one at the rear, the one that's going to be built? Is it the one that's depicted in the elevation here, I think that's gonna be built or is it possible of there being two bulkheads? Um, because again, yeah, this is, uh, as with my other neighbors, this is uh, taking away from, uh, from the, picture of the uh, neighborhood here. Um, that, that's really all I have to add. All right, thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, Mr. Cabado, I guess, can you uh, address? Yes, um, to answer your question, there are going to be two bulkheads. I, I, I can see it, I just checked the plans that there, there the rear bulkhead was not indicated, but there are going to be two bulkheads going up. They're the same height um, and this is, purely for egress from the roof. That's the only reason why we have those bulkheads. This is a four story building. It requires two means of egress. Um, and to answer the question, yes, it was, uh, it was not indicated. That was my, my mistake, but it, there, there are gonna be bulkheads going up to the roof. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Gabato. Voting Matthew Boston. Thank you raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. And state and spell your full name, please. Matthew, M-A-T-T-H-E-W, Boston, B-O-S-T-O-N. Mr. Boston, good evening. We have five minutes for you. Okay, thank you. And thank you, uh, board. Um, I, uh, I just, uh, I'm not going to take my five minutes. I just want to... Um, echo what I've just been hearing um, through uh, everybody else. Uh, I do have one question and that is, can somebody tell me how much higher this building is than the highest building on that block or how it compares in height to its surrounding buildings? I'd like to get a better idea of, of how much taller it is. Um, and before you leave, I'll just, I'll just say what I need to say so you don't have to come back to me. Um, that uh, I feel like I'm looking out to Palisades I think it was a couple of years since the uh, building height restriction has expired. Um, and I'm watching things go up so high. And I'm thinking of all the congested narrow streets like Webster in New York. And I just feel like this is just, uh, I'm just gonna echo what everybody else said that this is becoming, um, uh, it's just adding to a congestion and a look to the heights that I didn't move here for. I understand it downtown. I understand it in a bigger city feel. Um, I am also very much for development. I love the fact that the Heights is getting better and better and better. I just think height doesn't mean better. Um, and uh, and while um, you know there was no need to go to the RNA, um, it would have been nice just to go anyway. You know, I know that some, there are apologies for not reaching out to the community which is nice and I thank you for the apology, but just because you don't have to go to the, R, you know, the, the, the RNA, it would be nice to, to go anyway so people could talk about this, but I'm glad we are able to do it in this format and that's all I'm gonna say, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Boston. And you're, to be honest, your, your sound quality is awesome. I love the setup you have there. <laughs> I'm in a recording booth. <laughs> no, it sounds great, it sounds great. I recognize those. <laughs> it's been a long time, but I do recognize those. Uh, Mr. Cabato, do you want to address that? Um, what the other heights going down the going down Webster Ave are? Do you have that data? Cabato, You're on mute you again. Me? I'm sorry. I don't I don't have the data, but I do have a photo of what's directly next to us. So here we have a two-story structure, it appears. And over here, I've estimated this to be about five feet basement level or you know basement or shell level plus another perhaps 30 feet and then the the parapet so all in all i would say this is about 40 feet what we're proposing since we do not have a basement so we would be around uh close to this height to the height of this building but um you know with the parapet and all it, it, it it'll be a uh, maybe a few feet taller but this would be the the sort of the the context is the, the, the building directly next to us. And, and Raul, while, while we have this, this image up here, um, just so I could address the, the issues with discrepancies in the, in the plans, that the, this building and, and the adjacent building has a, I guess what we'd, what we'd call a garden level. And, and when you have a basement where a certain percentage of it is exposed, it's considered a story under the zoning ordinance. That is so, correct. So there's no there's no intention to to deceive anyone. It's just under the zoning ordinance, um, we've we believe that this building is a three story and the adjacent building is a four story, uh, because of how the, those numbers work out. Um, but but yes, if if I'm looking at this building, I'm saying saying it's a a, a two story. So if you're it, it's we did not intend to deceive anybody with those numbers. That's the only point I wanted to get across here. That's correct. And just for the record, um, I, I, I do want to counter Mr. Cabato's testimony. Um, you're saying that building next door is 40 feet, but you're counting the parapet wall on there. So 
you know, the legal way to measure that is from roof line. That's correct. So, you know, yeah, let's not, let's not call it 40 feet. It's, it's less than 40 feet, but the parapet does bring it up a little bit, but that's, you know, that's the same as your building. Right. Um, my, my, my testimony is that we are taller. We, we are going to be taller than this building next to us. And I believe the height to be, I estimated to be 40 feet at the top of the parapet. That's, that, that was my intent. All right. Thank you, Mr. Grabato. All right. Let's carry on with public comment. If anybody else is here that wants to comment. Promoting Scott R. Hi, could you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. And if you could state and spell your full name, thank you. Yeah, full name, Calvin Richterich, R-I-C-H-T-E-R-I-C-H. -E and Calvin? Calvin, C-A-L-V-I-N, Calvin. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening, sir. We have five minutes for you. Sure. I won't take up your five minutes, but uh, I'm a resident of the area. And I have to say that I, from the uh, testimonies that I've heard, I wholeheartedly uh, echo just about all of them. Um, my chief concern, I, I've lived in the area for 10 years and I used to live in, in a more urban area. And one of the reasons that I live here is to, to get away from that urban setting. Um, so you can imagine that this kind of architecture does have an impact, emotional impact on me. I take more of an emotional uh, stance because I obviously don't have a background in, in architecture or development. But I will say that I am a big uh, supporter. I think development is, is uh, ob obviously in this area, I wholeheartedly support it. I think it's very, I think it's integral to the, to the enhancement of this area. Um, but I walked down Webster today just to kind of get a sense of, of um, what it was a feel for that particular street. And um, a, an edifice or a building of that height is completely out of scope for that street. Uh, I think that it is there. If you're going to develop, I think should be, there should be a sense of cohesiveness with the area around you. I know that one of the gentlemen who called earlier lives on the street. He's uh, refurbished his home to go back to, I guess, its original uh, state. And I think that that is just completely um, out of line with what um, the idea of redevelopment would be for this particular area. I think it's great if you can redevelop along this area, but I don't think development necessarily means developing vertically. I think that you can, there are other ways you can go about it. And um, if this sounds crude on my part, it's because I don't have a knowledge of architecture or, uh, but I do think that there, obviously when you, when you decide to build that high in an area like this, I think it really comes down to profit. And I think that profit plays a big part in the, the reason of that development, that particular building. And I just don't find it to be, um, I don't find it to be really uh, a cohesive, integrated with the rest of this neighborhood. Um, so that's just wanted to give you a little bit of my opinion here. Okay, thank you, sir. We appreciate it. And you don't have to be an architect to comment here. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, anybody already? Would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm the testimony or about giving this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And please state and spell your full name for the record. Sure. Aaron Lombardi, A-A-R-O-N-L-O-M-B-A-R-D-I. Thank you. Mr. Lombardi, good evening. We have five minutes for you. Thanks, Chairman. You can call me Aaron, but uh, pre appreciate that. So I've um, I've lived in the I've lived in the Heights for 15 years. I've lived on Webster, lived on New York. I now live on Sherman Avenue, and I just want to go on the record as saying I agree with everything that people have said up to this point. Now I would be lying if I said that I'm concerned that my view is going to be blocked by a structure that's significantly higher than any other building on that on that street. 
It does though change the complexion of the, of the neighborhood as well. Um, the Heights has changed significantly over the, the 15 years that I've been here. I don't need to tell anybody on the call that. We, we all know that. Um, it has a very nice community feel. You see a lot more families. And uh, from my perspective, a, a structure and building like this is just out of character. And, and I do want to agree with what that last gentleman said about profit. And this is really more about profit than, than anything else. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm opposed. Just want to state that for the record. I'd see the rest of my time. Thank you. Thank you, Aaron. We appreciate it. Anybody else? Any other comments? Mr. Chair, I don't believe I see anybody. Um, and uh, seeing no one, I move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Um, Matt, this is, I'm um, sorry, Cameron, this is no, it's, it's, it's Cameron, okay, there you are. Yeah. Okay. Anything well, to add? Well, so before I get into the standard blurb about how uh, we need to agree to the conditions stated in the staff report, um, it's certainly a, you know, a, a trust that we have with the applicants and attorneys that work with the planning department. And, um, you know, we, we trust, we put faith in them to do their due diligence. Um, we all know the Riverview Neighborhood Association and we're all aware of them and their boundaries. So it's certainly disheartening to hear that they did not do their due diligence here. Um, and we planning staff had a phone call with Jocelyn. Um, it was me and her one-on-one -on -one for about 45 minutes and we walked through the project um, and explained everything. Um, and it's what we call a conforming as of right project here. Um, it's just unfortunate that there's this bad blood between the applicant and the community because the applicant is the one that's going to end up being there, you know, building this. Um, but that aside, um, the planning department asks that the applicant agree to the conditions stated in the staff report dated March 22nd in the year 2021. Uh, the, the applicant agrees to the conditions. Okay. Um, the only thing to add here is that the project does meet the objectives and goals of the redevelopment plan. Um, and it, it would be making this a more conforming project. Um, one in two family homes are only permitted in this zone of the Webster Avenue redevelopment plan. And it is a three family. So this is actually bringing it into more conformance with the redevelopment plan, which is what it's subjected to under the date that it was submitted to the planning department. And having said all of that, with its conformance, uh, planning staff recommends approval. All right, thanks, Cameron. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P20-146 as presented to the board here tonight. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded for approval. <laughs> all right, so Commissioner Horton, I'm going to be a dead horse, but I echo the planning department, everyone else. I think a lot could have been resolved here had they gone to the River the Association first. Um, that being said, uh, aye. Commissioner Allen? Uh, the same thing here, but I'm going to vote aye. All right. Dr. Gonzalez? Um, I was. I think you were supposed to call me first, but it's, it's okay. Yeah, sorry, uh, no worries. Um, look, I, I agree. There, so I can see both sides, right? Um, we live in a very dynamic city that's growing. Uh, I do know that people move to the Heights for that kind of more urban feel. Um, but two, two things that I want to say on record. One is, I think, Mr. Joseph, uh, you, you're realizing that, uh, you know, when you're developing in Jersey City, uh, it's just good faith to reach out to the community. Whatever community you're going to be developing in, I think the developer should have uh, reached out. It's just a good faith nature, uh, and it shows that you you actually care. And I think a lot of these feelings, a lot of these uh, this testimony, 
may have been, uh, you know, not heard today had you met with the community uh, from the beginning. Uh, and, you know, for the community, unfortunately, this is a, a, an application that is as of right, and uh, there's really um, no deviations or variances that are being sought. Um, and so we, you know, have really no reason to deny it. Um, and so uh, with, with all that being said, I, I do appreciate the community coming out. I do hear you because uh, as much as you, I don't know if you guys understand, but all of the commissioners that are sitting here today actually live in Jersey City. So we've taken an interest and a love for the city. Um, and so we do feel wh where you're coming from. Um, so with that being said, I vote aye. Okay. Commissioner Desai. Uh, yeah, you know, it's nice of the community to come out and uh, raise the issues for this project. Uh, I live in Jersey City in the Heights area for more than 30 years and I know you know how it feels with these projects coming out but whatever they uh, the planner and everybody has done everything is according to the plan and I think I'm going to vote I okay council president waterman I want to thank the community for coming out and um I understand what you what you're uh, what you're going through because I don't live far from a place that they have built this four story building and it makes it changes it changes the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Now, the developer knows that he should go to the community. I'm just not making no excuses because they've been before the planning board so many times, so they know that they should go to the community. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I don't know why we keep apologizing, but this is we old. You know, this is something old. They know they should go to the community, and and I think part of the uh, problem is they don't want to go to the community because they probably knew the community would um, not agree with this project. And I understand when um, a project coming to your neighborhood is changing the whole structure of it because people put money in their homes. To, to make it conform to that neighborhood. They move in a neighborhood because they like it. They like what it's what they see. And then for developers to come in and to develop and don't even discuss it with them, don't even care about really what that community is going through because they won't live there themselves. Um, I agree with the community. So I'm going to vote no. It could be as a right, but to me, it seemed like they should have just at least spoke to the community and they can go back and speak to the community for me and come back. You know, the community may give you some good ideas on how it could be done, where it can conform to their neighborhood. So I just vote no. Commissioner Torres? Yes, um, I want to thank the community for coming out too. Um, um, and I do agree with, you know, we shouldn't have to keep reminding developers that they need to speak to the community, be friendly neighbors in the community, especially when it's a development that they're not personally living in themselves. So it's an event. Um, this isn't an as a right project, but you know what? I feel sometimes that just because it's an as a right project right. does not mean if it it's, uh, it's not right there. Um, and this happens to be one of those parts. Um, if it's changing the look of the community, it's, it's, it doesn't. Now, the other part, and I thank the uh, public for coming out and, let, and showing me how they feel about their community and what the, what it, what the block looks like, you know? Um, the parking situation, it's just not gonna fly with me. All we're doing, and I, and I, and I hope the, um, the staff realizes, and I'm gonna bring it up to um, the council, that all we're doing is causing a bad situation for our police department, a bad situation for our neighbors, um, and people that have to live, when you start doing tandem parking, it just, it, it just, no, it makes no sense to me that somebody's gonna allow their car to be driven out of a space by somebody else if that car is brand new or whatever, whatever reason, even if it's an old car. Uh, and we'll put the keys on, on a shelf in the garage 
and we'll switch cars later on and they could use my car. And it, it, it just, the concept really does not um, work. It's, um, make it clear if a, a project comes to me with a tandem park, it is going to actually 90% of the time is going to get a no vote. This one does get a no vote for me. So I vote no. Okay. And uh, lastly, Chairman Langston. Um, so, you know, I do want to reiterate for the record, I do live a few blocks away from this. Um, I am outside the 200 feet that would require me to recuse, but you know, I've been a resident of the Heights um, for almost 20 years now, and I, I've seen the neighborhood go through these changes. Um, four stories there is a stretch. Um, I, I think it, it does change the dynamics of the neighborhood in a big way. Um, that being said, this is according to the plan. This is what the plan says. This is what the plan asks for. Um, I, I don't think I'm, you know, basically legally allowed to vote the other way. Uh, while I do agree with the public that this is a big change, um, it, it's, I, I think it's beyond my reach to go against what the plan says. We're kind of uh, bound by that. So before I vote, um, I do want to reiterate to Mr. Joseph, um, you know, you know the RNA well. Um, you know, we encourage developers to reach out to the community boards. Um, I don't know if maybe this is a conversation I should have with Joyce tomorrow. Um, you sure. know, is there any way city council can get legislation in? I know, you know, of one plan, one redevelopment plan that says that you have to meet with the community group. Mm -hmm. I don't know why this isn't a, a citywide situation. Uh, if developments of a certain size come into a neighborhood, the developer should have to meet with the community group. Um, so, you know, I don't know if we could we could look at an ordinance to do that. Sure. Um, I think it would save a lot of headaches, a lot of problems. Uh, I don't know that the neighborhood would feel differently if it was, per, you know, if it was presented to the the RNA beforehand. <clears throat> but you know, at least some of the bad blood would be out of the way, uh, right. where face to face they could work some of these things out. So. You know, obviously my vote is yes tonight, um, but, you know, this is a tough one. It, it's it's a big change to the neighborhood that uh, really doesn't follow precedent there. Uh, most of those those properties are smaller in size. So I'm an I. Motion carries all in favor with, I mean, sorry, no. Motion carries five in favor, two opposed with conditions. Okay, thank you, Cameron. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to item 16 on the agenda tonight. Uh, case P19-169 is a minor site plan with C variances. The address is 278 Pine Street. Once again, Mr. Joseph. Okay, good evening. Um, Stephen Joseph from the Trauma Law Firm. The applicants, can we... Um, Get our notices into evidence, please. Thank you, Council Chairman. I am in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to the application of 278 Pine Street here in the city. All does appear to be in order. We can mark those as A1. Okay, great. Um, so, <clears throat> So Alan Feld is our architect this evening. Um, we're going to do something a little unorthodox. I'm, I'm going to be sharing my screen and going through the plans um, due to technical difficulties on Alan's end. And, and he is going to be comment, commenting on it as we go through. So uh, before we get into that, the, this property is located on the south, south side of Pine Street. It's in the TOD West zone of the Morris Canal Redevelopment Plan 
the applicant is proposing a, a new six story, six unit building. Um, that's, that's what's permitted there. In order to accomplish this, the applicant is requesting minor site plan approval with two minor variances, one for the location of the bike rack and one for the rear yard setback. As we go through the plans, I, I think you'll see that they are pretty minor and, and that they, they make sense given the situation. Um, we did meet with the council person, we did meet with the Morris Canal Community Association, presented this project in front of them. There's no affordable units proposed in this building, but the overall feedback from the community was, was very positive. Um, so I am going to share my screen now. Alan, you're there, right? I am here. So let's get you sworn in first and, and then I'll share my screen. Can we get video or no? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Hi, Alan. Hi. Would you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Please state and spell your full name for the record. Alan Feld, A-L-A-N-F-E-L-D. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Feld, good evening. Um, is your license current tonight in the state yes. of New Jersey? Yes, it is. Okay. Thank you. You're qualified. Thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, is everybody able to see my screen? Did I lose you? Not yet. Uh, yeah, it's coming up. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay, we got it. Wonderful. Um, so we're gonna start with the, with the zoning table here, just so we could see what what variances we're requesting. It's a six unit multifamily, um, lot size is 2438, it setbacks, we have zero front yard that's conforming. We run into a situation with the rear yard setback. The principal structure um, does conform with, with the setback. And this is one of those zones where you're taking the measurement from the front of the property, not from the rear of the property. So the the actual structure, the rear wall of the structure does conform uh, because of the, the deck and the stairs in the back and, and its orientation. We do need relief for that. And, and Alan will, will walk you through that. We conform with side yard setback. We conform with the building height. We conform with the density. There's no parking required here. And we are requesting a deviation for the bike rack location. It's supposed to be within the building we're locating it in the rear of the building. Um, you'll also see as we go through the plans, this is because of the, the flood zone and, and narrowness of the lot. Um, it makes more sense in the rear yard. So we'll just take a look at the, the zoning real quick as well. It's TOD West uh, within, within Morris Canal. So Alan, we're gonna start with the um, we're going to start with the with the site plan. Um, we're going to start with the site plan, Alan. So why don't we why don't we go over that first? So yeah, again, <clears throat> this is a, a six story building. Um, the building itself is uh, seventy five feet deep um, by uh, twenty uh, uh, twenty two feet wide. <clears throat> on the north side, there's zero setback. On the south side, there's a three-foot side yard. And we have a gate um, on the side yard as well to restrict ac access, right, Alan? That's correct. That's correct. And as we go into the, the rear, the, the bike location, you could see the in the rear yard, it's, it, it's right over here adjacent to the deck. Um, and, and there are six bike parking spaces proposed there. Um, and this might also be a good place, Alan, to talk about the, the rear yard setback relief, um, which is related to this rear stairs, which is considered a deck under the ordinance. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So the also, yeah. I'm sorry, Alan, go ahead. Yeah, so the <laughs> lot itself is uh, 97.5 feet deep. Um, we have uh, decks for each unit at the rear of the building and a second means of egress, which is the staircase. And uh, beyond the staircase is an additional uh, 10 feet of uh, unoccupied space. 
So, so the variance that we're requesting is, is related to the, the distance of the rear of the staircase to the front of the property. That's um, That's so, um, it, also additionally in the rear, Alan, we have, we have grass and we're also proposing um, some trees in the rear as well. That's correct. Okay, wonderful. At the front, we're also proposing a, a street tree. Yes. Okay. Um, so we'll start on the the first first floor, Alan, um, and maybe just a, a overview of the prior version of the plan. Um, we we had a cellar, and we had removed that because of the the floodplain, um, but. Why don't you walk us through the, the first floor? So we have an entrance lobby um, in the front. Uh, we have an entrance into the, the ground floor unit, which is actually raised again because of the, in the flood area. Um, and we have a, a front staircase um, and, and we have an elevator in the building. And this elevator will go up to the top floor and also gets the occupants on the first floor into their unit. Um, this uh, ground floor unit is uh, a two bedroom, two bath, open living room, kitchen uh, unit. And, and you could again see the, the deck in the rear, the staircase and the bike rack located in the, in the rear yard. Um, we'll go on to the second through fifth floor plans. One thing you'll notice is that there, there is private elevator access to, um, to each unit, which is really, really Cool feature you don't see too often, but Alan, why don't you take us through the, the units for a second through fifth floors? Yeah, so all these units are the same. Um, there's a living room with an open kitchen, a, a dining area, separate dining area, uh, two children's bedrooms, um, their bathroom, and then a master uh, bedroom, uh, master bedroom, bathroom uh, with walk in closet and then the rear deck and the second means of egress. Great. And then the sixth floor penthouse, um, which, which is set back in accordance with, with the ordinance. Yeah, so that, that floor is uh, the same as the other floors, uh, except it is set back about five or six feet from the front uh, facade. And that would be a deck for that unit. Um, and, and while we're here as well, we should talk about the, the screening at, at the rear. Um, so we do have adequate screening on the side that has the means of egress, but screening is also required um, for, this, for this deck um, along the side uh, of it to, to block access to the adjacent property. We don't have a detail on, on the plans for that. Um, but Alan, we are, we are going to provide screening there in accordance with the ordinance, correct? That's correct. Okay, we'll go to the, we'll go to the roof plan next. Um, so in order to help mitigate the, that rear yard setback variance related to the second means of egress, we are proposing 500 square feet of green roof. And Alan, those were the, um, those are the green roof trays, right? That's correct. We have our HVAC compressors and what, what type of HVAC system are we using on, on the building, Alan? Uh, this is a central system. Each one mm -hmm. has so their own. Not, not PTAX. Not PTAX, no. Not PTAX, okay. Um, elevator bulkhead. Um, and then we'll go into the elevations next. So this is the, the front elevation over here. We have the right, the right side. Correct. And then we have the left side. So you can see it's on the, on the right side elevation. We need to provide adequate screening along these decks um, in, in accordance with the ordinance, which, which we do. This, the left side already has that there. And then the rear elevation, the, the view, the view from the real the rear of it. And Alan, if you want to just talk about the materials briefly. Yeah, so um, the black sapphire brick would be on the front facade. Uh, 
this uh, black metal panel would be the infill around the windows. Um, the gray vinyl would be on the side and the stucco would be at the lower level uh, on the side and rear. And I'm, I'm not sure if I asked you, I might have overlooked this, the, the unit sizes, um, approximate unit sizes for each unit. They're about 1300 square feet. With the ground floor being the, um, the smallest because of the lobby. That's correct. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing this and I'm gonna bring up the rendering. My client did have a, a rendering completed. We'll start with the, the, the front. We do need to enter this into evidence. Um, this was only completed, I, I believe, a couple of days ago. So um, it's going to be two sheets, Bridget. They are, they are renderings of the front and rear uh, facades of the building. Let's mark those as A2 and A3, respectively. A2 and A3. Okay. <clears throat> so this is the this is the front this is the front facade um, of the building. It's you know, classic and and modest. Uh, my client worked worked hard on the design. I'm going to stop sharing this, and I am going to bring up the rear, which is a little bit more a little bit more interesting. Um, so this is this is the rear, and it, and again, this this side over here is the side that we need we need to put the screening in accordance with, with the ordinance. This side already has that, that screening over there. And again, the location of the bike rack, which is um, secured by a gate an entrance into the rear. And I believe the only other thing I wanted to show you is, uh, so if we zoom in a little bit, So this is the location of the property here. Um, there's a similar size property on either side, but there are larger developments that, that have been proposed. I, I believe some have been approved uh, along Maple and and this property as as well. So there are there are other larger developments um, that are that are going over there. Um, so if there's any questions for for Alan. Or, or myself, we're happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. Uh, just a couple of quick ones. Um, the, you know, the easy one. Uh, what's the stucco? Is that a smooth finish? Uh, yeah, it would be a smooth. Yes. Okay, and um, the deck screening. What's the material going to be on that? Is it the same as the other side? Is it going to look the same as the other side? So, Alan, I think we were, we were talking about um, something that could have vegetation on it. So, like a, like a metal mesh screening that you could put plants in. Yeah, something to block the view, basically. Um, to go with the railing system as well. So, it wouldn't look out of place. Oh, my God. Okay, so is that is that what we're proposing? Is it going to be a, a metal mesh with, you know, kind of a living wall? I don't believe we we've finalized that, but we're ha we're happy to, you know, agree to that now. Or if the board prefers a railing system that that would look more in in place. Well, it's you know, the board isn't the architect on record. Um, you know, I'd prefer that something was presented to us, and and we can comment on that. So you know. Are there options that we're talking about or is just, is this up in the air right now? Alan, I, I think, I think what we talked about was the, was the metal screening with the, with the vegetation, right? Yeah, I think that's what the, uh, the owner was um, implying. Okay, so can we, can we nail that down? It's going to be a, a metal screen with vegetation on it. Yes. Yes. And um, you know, I, I don't more, like. If the board would feel more comfortable, Chairman. Uh, we could also condition it that they work with staff on providing that detail, and and we'll match it up to other uh, sort of similar products or treatments we've seen in other areas of the city, and, and make sure that that detail matches. And 
it's uh, something that we think is going to be successful. Okay. Yeah, I'm comfortable with that. I'm just, you know, my concerns are the size of the the openings on the metal screening that, you know, little fingers can't get in there and, and get cut up. Uh, so, yeah, I would, I would be fine with uh, having staff work on that. Um, yeah, those are my only questions. Anybody else? Yeah, I yeah, have a yeah. question. Go ahead, doctor. Yeah, in the back, you have a deck. So if there is emergency, people can get down from all the way, from the sixth floor all the way down. And is there a safety, like burglars won't go up the deck? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's technically classified as, as a deck, just, just because how it is under the ordinance. But it's really an a emergency egress stairwell. Um, and it, the doors, they, they self-lock, right, Alan? You could get out, but you can't get in. That's right, okay. on each floor. Okay, thank you. The, are the doors keyed or do they automatically lock? They, they, my understanding is they automatically lock. So they're, they're almost like a fire egress door where you can get out, but you can't get in. In addition to that, there's also the gate on the side, on the side of the property that restricts access. Okay. Uh, is the building sprinkled? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I was just concerned with the windows, you know, as long as there's sprinkle, you know, sprinklers there, I'm fine with the windows. There would be a water curtain on them. Um, okay. Anybody else? Any questions? I have a question. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. The right side of the building. Well, first, well, first of all, are these going to be rentals or condos? So the the intention, I, I think, uh, it, based on the design, is is condos. I know my client would cer certainly prefer to do condos. The community was excited about condos. Uh, so I right don't now, think. I'm sorry. Yeah. Right now, the right hand side of the property and the left hand side of the property are vacant. There's no buildings there. There there are buildings on there are buildings on either side. So when you built the windows, that the windows and the doors on the right hand side of the building, and people go by the units, they're gonna know that they're gonna be looking at another building right in front of them, like thirty six inches away. So it's it's. But you have all the windows on the side or the right hand side of the building. Correct. On the lower part, so the so if somebody was gonna buy a condo there, they already know they're not gonna find out later that somebody's gonna build something in front of them. They're gonna know that there's a wall that they're going to be looking at. There, there's an existing building there. It's a, it's a smaller building. Um, the, the adjacent properties could, of course, be developed with something, something oh, similar Jeff. to this, something similar in size to, to this building. But there, yep. there is also, I believe, an, another even larger building, uh, one or two lots away. That, that's So basically, all the windows on the right-hand side one day might be View the only view they will have is the other building that's next to it. Correct. Basically, correct, right? Correct. So as yes. a condo for sale, would that would be information that they would know about, or that somebody's going to find out later on when um, they're developing that they're going to have coming to us and saying, "You can't build that building because you're blocking my view." So I don't. I don't think that that would be the case uh like i said the building's already there there's other development going there's on a small that, building there but it can be a big one later on it could it could be yeah it could it could be a so we can knock the small one down we can build a bigger building correct we sell the condos mm -hmm. people who start objecting to it because it happens it happens to us a few times already and now you're telling the people well you don't have you know, you got a window and that's what you're gonna look at so, so i'm I, I obviously can't uh, pr predict if, if people are going to well, come and complain about that. I, I'm not. I'm not sure of what I could. Uh, I don't know if it's legal for us to. Um, I, don't, I don't know how they would do it, but to allow it that when people are buying, to let them know that something is going to be maybe can be at one time maybe be developed in front of those windows. Um. No. I, I, what I'll say is that buyers are, are represented by attorneys. Um, 
okay. like myself, when, when I have clients who, who buy condos in new buildings, I take a quick look around, I ch check out the zoning map and I see what's allowed to go there. Um, if it's very important to have, have that window with, with that view of a, of a side lot, which you know, it doesn't matter if you're in an R1 zone or in a redevelopment zone where 100 unit buildings allowed, um, three foot one inch is, is what's typically the side, side yard. Uh, of, of any of any building and the one quick question that the alleyway to the bike rack that walkway mm -hmm. that, that's a locked gate that they'll come in with the bicycles yep. on the street level and they can just walk to the back and lock the bikes up in the back correct it's it's secured um that's where also access to the trash room is um is okay over. is there a cover over the bike so it's just open in the uh, <coughs> Alan, is there a is there a cover over the bikes? Oh, we don't have one at this point. Okay, okay, good. All right, there's a locked area that the bikes are not just sitting there where anybody Correct. can go back. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much. All right, thanks, Eddie. Anybody else? Any any questions? Any comments? All right, thank you, Mr. Feld. Council, anything else? Uh, that concludes our, our testimony. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, so at this time, if anybody's here from the public that wants to comment, please raise your hands. If you are calling in and you'd like to comment on this application, please raise your hands. Anybody from the public, if you'd like to comment, please raise your hands. And once again, if you're calling in, you can press star nine to raise your hands. Mr. Chair, seeing no, no public, I move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. And is this is this is Matt. This is Matt, anything to add? Uh, so, uh, staff prepared a memo for this application. It's dated March tenth, twenty twenty one. Um, the applicant and uh, Mr. Joseph were uh, able to uh, go over some of the details of, of the, the zoning. Um, and the conditions around uh, the development. Um, this is in the DOD West District, the Morris Canal Redevelopment Plan. Uh, they're on this block right now, uh, two lots are just separated by one lot um, is a seven story building that is constructed. Um, and another lot in between beyond that uh, is a six story building under construction. Currently, um, this is a, a um, development intense zoning area. Um, the, the height here is permitted, the, the density is permitted, um, the, uh, the lack of parking is permitted here to, to um, leverage the, the nearby transit. Um, the applicant did work with staff on, on uh, some elements of the facade uh, and, and the uh, bay window. Um, uh, as well as uh, as well as just uh, responding to some of the uh, the callouts on some of the variances that were that were discovered here, um, there are six recommended conditions in the staff memo, and and that would be uh, there would be one more that was added on the record here tonight uh, regarding uh, working with staff on um, that screening on the the south uh, side of the property. Um, so with that, um, the board makes a motion to approve. We would recommend those conditions as well as the additional one. Um, and we also recommend approval of this application. The, um, the app, I'm sorry, uh, the, the applicant has reviewed the conditions. Uh, I've reviewed it with the applicant and they're all acceptable. Okay, thank you, Council. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P19 Dash one six nine is presented to, to us tonight. Okay. Okay. Motion is made and seconded for approval. Commissioner Gonzalez. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. Commissioner Allen. Aye. Commissioner Horton. Aye. Council President Waterman. Aye. Commissioner Desai. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. On a motion to approve with conditions, uh, all in favor. 
motion. Carried. Okay, thank you. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank you, Council. You too. Uh, Bridget, are you okay with one more or do you want to take a break? I'd like to take a break because I have a feeling that next one is going to go more than a half hour. So. Okay. Uh, okay. Five minutes, okay? Yep. Okay, let's take five, everybody. It's 836. We'll be back on at 841. <laughs> Not nice. Nice, isn't it?
<clears throat> okay, can we come to order again, everybody? Thanks, Chris. You got it. Thank you. Uh, okay, let's. I'm sorry, Bridget. No. I'm You'll good. set? Okay. Uh, all right, let's move on. We'll call case P20-124 is a preliminary and final major site plan with C variants. Uh, the address being 124 to 126 Martin Luther King Drive. Gerard, do you hear us? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I, I had some audio problems. I saw mouths moving, but I couldn't hear anyone, so I apologize. <laughs> good, good evening, Chairman. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, good evening, Council. Bridget. Um, my name is Gerard Pizzillo. I'm an attorney with Genova Burns. I'm here tonight on behalf of the applicant, Skyway Realty, LLC. Uh, the property we're talking about is 124-126 Martin Luther King Jr. Drive. Block is 25603, lots three and four. Uh, we are before this board tonight seeking preliminary and final major site plan with deviations. Uh, so we did notice this, and I would just ask Mr. Alampi to confirm that everything is in order in uh, that regard. Thank you, Council. I am in receipt of the affidavit of publication proof of mailing with respect to the application at 124 126 Martin Luther King drive here in the city all does appear to be in order we can go ahead and mark those as a1 for the record okay hey, that's a1 thank you council thank you bridget so as i indicated uh the property we're speaking about tonight is 124 126 martin luther king jr drive the property is located in the jackson hill redevelopment area and governed by the jackson hill redevelopment plan uh, the project that we're requesting your approval for tonight is a five-story mixed-use, uh, five-story, 56-feet, three-inch structure uh, containing about 1,900 square feet of uh, ground floor commercial retail space and 25 residential dwelling units. Uh, the unit breakdown is eight studios and 17 one-bedrooms. Um, the deviations that we're requesting, there's four in number, and I believe they are pretty minor. Uh, the first is a deviation for height. Uh, the maximum height in this zone, uh, zone one of the Jackson Hill um, redevelopment plan, uh, it, maximum is 55 feet. We are at 56 feet, three inches. Uh, and you'll hear from our planner, Edward Colling, as to the, under, uh, the basis and the justification for that. Uh, the second and third variance is related to the uh, rear yard and the uh, requirement in the plan that uh, in terms of frontage from a right of way, uh, the property that we're talking about is a corner lot, vacant uh, corner of MLK and Fulton. Uh, so Ed will address and, and justify the and put forth the, the evidential basis uh, for, for those for those two deviations. And the final deviation that we're asking for is for the maximum shape factor of the site. Um, and as Ed will testify to, it's a it's a two uh, oddly shaped or regular sized or regular lots. Uh, the maximum set forth in the plan is 28. Uh, and we're asking that the shape factor be 31. Uh, other than that, I, this is a generally an as of right project. Uh, the use is permitted. Uh, the, you know, the units, the number of units, all of that is permitted. Um, there is a requirement in the Jackson Hill redevelopment plan that we meet with the and share with the Jackson Hill Main Street uh, SID. Uh, our plans. Uh, so we did provide them our plans and we did meet with their executive body. Um, and they were, you know, generally supportive of the project. Uh, I hope some of them are, are on tonight to confirm that. But, uh, you know, we worked with them and, and my client will continue to, uh, 
to address some of the concerns that they did have, uh, not necessarily land use issues, just in terms of uh, some things post and during construction uh, that you know that we could work together on. Um, I have three witnesses. I don't think I'll be over a half hour. I hope not. Um, but you know, I will move as quickly as I can. Um, and I spoke with our, our professionals earlier today, and I ensure I, I made sure I knew we were going to be here on, on late that we move through this quickly. Uh, so I will we will do our best to make that happen. Uh, my three witnesses are Mark Shizvet from Shizet Engineering. He's our civil engineer. He'll walk you through the civil uh, engineering aspects of the project. Next up, we'll have Eli Martin from LWDMR Architects. He's the architect of record. And then finally, batting cleanup, we'll have uh, Edward Colling from Dresner Robin, and he will put forth the uh, planning testimony for the uh, deviations that we're requesting. Uh, so if the board doesn't have any questions for me at this point, I'll turn it right over to Mark and he could run you through the uh, civil site highlights of the project. Okay, thank you, Council. Okay, raise your right hand to be sworn. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And state and spell your full name for the record, please. M Mark, M-A-R-K, Chisvet, C-H-I-S, V-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Thank you. Mr. Chisvet, good evening. Uh, your license is current tonight? Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay, you're qualified. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, did we uh, get notice on record or did I miss that? We did that, Chairman. Uh, all right. I apologize, guys. I was right before Mr. Pizzillo told us he was wearing his red wallabies. Love, wa <laughs> love wallabies. <laughs> Okay. Forget so, that I heard that. Mr. Chisvet, go ahead, please. Okay, Just go ahead. I'd like to share my screen, please. Um, so um, you see, uh, just to confirm it, you see uh, the cover sheet of our site plan? We can. Yes, we see it, Mark. Okay, and so let me just zoom in on the key map a little bit so you can see it better. So the property in question, lots three and four, um, this is Martin Luther King Drive, and this is Fulton Avenue. And as you can see, the two lots combined kind of forms this odd L-shape, uh, kind of irregular L-shaped piece of property. And the total lot area is uh, 6,394 square feet. So um, I will uh, switch over to the site plan and just to get you a little bit oriented, uh, if you imagine Martin Luther King Drive as a as a north south street, that's on the bottom of the page, and north is going from right to left. Fulton Avenue is along the left edge. Uh, the property in question, I'm, I'm, I'm outlining with my mouse. Um, the the shorter dimension, as you know, uh, you know, defines the front street, and the longer dimension defines the side street. So Fulton Avenue is actually the front street and Ed Colling will get into the deviations. Uh, the front setback or the, the rear of our yard setback rather is measured from Fulton Avenue uh, you know, as by definition. So we're proposing uh, the building more or less will follow the shape of the building, but there is an easement um, Toward, uh, towards uh, the easterly side of the property, which is actually for the benefit of the adjacent lot five, there's an existing dwelling there. And there's a five foot wide easement that wraps around two sides of that lot for ingress and egress into and out of the lot five building. Uh, so the proposed building respects that easement. It is set back five feet along the side of lot five, it's actually set back eight foot, five inches, a little bit more than the width of the easement on the rear of lot five. And this is to provide, to, to maintain that access and, and respect that easement. Uh, the, uh, there, is a, there is a rear yard on, on the extremity of what is presently lot three that is proposed at the new building. Uh, there is a little bit of a setback. It varies. There are various notches on the ground floor, um, and there's sort of a chamfer at the corner for the entrance to the retail. 
to provide a little space. This is quite a bit of traffic signal and other equipment at that intersection and two handicap ramps. So this provides some um, uh, fairly generous pedestrian movement around that corner. Uh, and, then, uh, and so part of that is, is, in, that, is in that setback. Uh, the streetscape is your typical uh, gray Schofield gray with the five by five scoring. We are proposing three street trees. There's one tree that exists that's right at the edge of the property, uh, at the frontage, right at the edge of the frontage. And then we're proposing three additional trees along Martin Luther King Drive. In between the trees, we're proposing uh, the decorative uh, street lights that are consistent. If you go to the other side, of, go to the north side of Fulton Avenue, on both sides of the street, they use the same post top, what's called the uh, signature series. It's it's a PSENG leased fixture, but it's used commonly throughout Jersey City, and we're so we're matching that and carrying that that pattern across the frontage of this project as well. Uh, so we are proposing five light poles, uh, and I'm just going to move on down to the lighting plan. As you can see, there's there's quite a bit of of uh, coverage on light from those from those street lights uh, how about utilities mark yeah i just going to go to that so so um the utilities are all connecting at martha on martin luther king drive water sewer and well, electric gas it's all going to come off of martin luther king drive there is an existing combined sewer that basically this is the the end of it is a manhole that's right opposite uh, the stairwell of the proposed building. And so we're proposing to connect to that manhole. That, that, that main does not continue further north from that point. Um, we did receive comments from the MUA. They generally, their comments were basically uh, boilerplate. Um, the conditions that had to do with what we need to submit when we're ready to go for permits. Uh, they had, they took no issue to any of the, uh, connections that we're proposing. Um, and go ahead, Mark. I was just going to ask, we also got a, a comment letter from JC Engineering. Is that correct? Yes, we did. We okay. Did. Um, and I know two of the item. Well, talk to us about comment number two. Comment number two had to do with building overhang, if that's the, if that's the one you're talking no, about. No, I'm, that's, I'm talking about the one where the, 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 the concern is that the building is over the property line. Right. Yes. So is that, the, that's not place, correct. So right. You can see that a little bit better and I'll zoom in on a little bit and, and Eli Martin will, will get into more detail on the building itself, but it, there is a projection beyond on the second floor and up, uh, not on the ground floor, but the, this, the upper floors project beyond the property line is four foot uh, along Martin Luther King. There's a, I think it's one foot along Fulton at this corner then it drops back and then there's another projection uh, about midway uh, along the frontage and the, again, four feet beyond the property line. Um, and like I said, um, Eli Martin will discuss that. It, it, it conforms to IBC code, um, but the letter from engineering suggests that we may need a uh, franchise agreement for that encroachment. And, uh, you know, if, if that's the case, then we will make an application to city council to get that franchise agreement. Okay. Okay. Anything else civil side that yeah, just want know, to point out that the site is, is, is only, it's not even 7,000 square feet. It's, it's barely half the size of a major development. So it does not require storm detention and none is proposed. Okay. I have nothing further for Mark uh, unless the board has any questions for him. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I have nothing for Mr. Chisvet. Anybody else, any questions? Okay, thank you, Mr. Chisvet. Thanks, Mark. And uh, council, uh, not, to, yes. not to stop you, um, I do apologize to everybody. I, I forgot to reiterate that uh, anything that we carried tonight uh, is in the chat. Uh, this is our last application of the night. So uh, anybody that's here for anything else, uh, please check the chat. Uh, we did have a number of items carried tonight. So they're all listed in there. All right, go ahead, Council. Okay, thank you. 
to, thank you, Chairman. Uh, the next witness I have is uh, Eli Martin. If Eli could come forward. He's, I see him, he's in here, the last name, or sixth name. There it is. Okay, he's on the way. He's, he's muted, guys. Yeah. Eli, can you unmute and share your, uh, there you go, turn on your video. There we go, there we go, there he is. Hey, would you raise your right hand to be sworn? Do you swear? I can't see you. Do you swear, thank you. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. And if you could state and fill your full name for the record. Yes, Eli Martin, E L I M A R T I N. Thank you. Mr. Martin, good evening. Uh, good your evening. license is current tonight in the state. Yes, of it is. Okay, yes, thank you. You're qualified. Thank you. Okay, Eli, uh, can you run the board through the uh, architectural highlights of the project and what you and your team uh, developed as part of this, please? Yes. Can everybody see the screen, I hope? Yes. Yes, okay. we can. Okay. Um, well, uh, here's the site. We're about 12 blocks south of the hub between Fulton and Woodlawn on Martin Luther King Drive. As Mark said, it's a, it's a, these are two odd shaped lots, uh, essentially corner lot. This is what the site looks like today. So this is taken along Martin Luther King Drive. This would be Fulton over here. This is an existing two family house just to the south of us. Another view. This is a view from Fulton looking south. Uh, as, 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 uh, as Gerard said, we have 25 units in total, six on a floor, one ground floor unit, and we have two retail spaces. Um, and we have a cellar space of about 1500 square feet. So here is the Cellar space. Uh, the redevelopment plan asks that we put all these functions in a cellar, which we are doing to keep them out of the ground floor. The intent is to make the ground floor uh, walkable, promote foot traffic, and activate a commercial area as it once was. So, as you can see, we have this is Fulton, Martin Luther King Drive here at the bottom of the sheet. We have one 928 square foot retail space. We've cut the corner to make it a little bit more gracious as a transition walking down a more residential street as opposed to a commercial street. We have a lobby in the center with a bike room and refuse. This is, this is trash compactor, elevator and stair. We have a second retail space of 952 square feet. And the, the plan does not permit parking or residential use within 20 feet of Martin Luther King Drive, nor does it per, uh, allow for a curb cut. Uh, obviously parking is not required here. It's also not required because we have studios and one bedrooms. Parking requirement would start at two, two bedroom. So what we've done is we've created a rear unit on the ground floor. It's more than 20 feet back. And we've decided to treat the facade on Martin Luther King Drive as the front of the building. Uh, as Mr. Chisvet said, if you were to treat the Fulton frontage as the front, we could only go back a certain distance and we'd have a vacant lot between the two family house and our building. The idea was to create a continuous street wall here, which, which we prefer and I think planning would prefer as well. And so we, we do have the ground floor unit. Uh, it's actually raised a little bit higher than the lobby just to get it off the ground. And it has a little deck in the back and a 10 foot rear yard. So we are 90 feet back 
at the ground floor, which complies with the plan. And the upper level, which I'll show you in a minute, is 85 feet back. So this is your typical floor plan. Uh, it's primarily a single loaded corridor type of design with the exception of this studio and this one bedroom here. But essentially we have a one bedroom on the corner with a bay window. We have a one bedroom in the center with a bay window. We have a studio, a one bedroom, a studio, and a, a one bedroom in the rear with a balcony, a five foot balcony. And that goes all the way up from floors two through five. And Eli, before you go on further, those yes. two bay windows, those are the encroaching items the, that were those are the addressed. Yes. Okay. Excuse me, just watch stepping over one another for a clear record. Thank you. The, yes, those are the encroachments. Let me just go back to the first floor for a minute. We've pulled the, the first floor back a minimum of one foot along Martin Luther King Drive and three feet in front of the retail space here. And obviously we've turned the corner here. This stair bulkhead is actually on the property line. We've also pulled the building back uh, two feet from Fulton Street. So we're not built full on the front property lines at all. So what we've done is we've projected these bay windows give a little bit more to break the facade down a little bit to give it some shadow line and also to make the units a little bit better. It is a very narrow site. There is a common roof deck, which is 10% of the gross roof area, which is about 565 square feet. Uh, there's no enclosure on the roof except for an elevator lobby, which is permitted. Uh, there are two means of egress, this stair and this stair. There are condensing units on the roof. The rest of this is a green roof. And there is a, a prefab water plant here. There are no P-TACs in the building. Every unit has, it has a, um, a forced hot air system using hot water. So there, there are no P-TACs. Uh, this plant there is around the edge of the common roof deck, just to give a little nice green edge to it. Mm -hmm. These are the elevations. Uh, and I'm gonna go through this quickly because we have renderings and material which I can show you. But you can see the ground floor. The ground floor is 12 feet uh, the second floor, rather, is 12 feet above the sidewalk level. This is the elevation on Fulton. These are some of the side elevations. Uh, the, side, the side material is a smooth, stipple finished stucco. OK, the materials. We're using a combination of these two gray corrugated steel siding, and we're using a, a, a very standard brick. And this is what it looks like. So we have the bays are clad as the stair bulkhead is in a standard brick. And in between, we have corrugated siding in two different colors. So this would be color one, color two, color one, color two, etc. The brick carries down to the ground floor. We have storefront here. This turns the corner. This column is wrapped in aluminum to match the aluminum windows. These are all wood clad aluminum windows, by the way. And you can see one, two, three new street trees. This is the existing tree. This is the existing two family house. This gives you a little better view coming down the street. I think the photograph is slightly out of scale. Uh, over here, but it's, but it's, uh, and a little bit over here, but you can see the way the sidewalk turns the corner and it opens up in front of the corner retail. That's my presentation. If anybody has any questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Martin. Uh, anybody, any questions? I don't have a question, but I have a statement. Sure. Go ahead, Jeffrey. The, the building is nice. Um, I mean, no doubt about it, but I just see 
the two foot and the three foot setback on the lower levels being a problem only because homelessness in the neighborhood and you know it's a rainy day i can see easy 10 15 people standing out underneath there for shelter okay good point good point it I, i'm not sure how we address that frankly well, let, let me, I, I hope let, there's no no homelessness i mean i guess that's how we address it but well i have to, i have to say we used to get those comments i mean i've been doing this a long time <laughs> too long uh, when we were doing even even brownstones and, and infill small projects in downtown, it's part of the I think it's part of the growing pain. Um, you want good design, and you want to make the sidewalk as wide as possible. You want to protect the entrance. These are protecting the entrances to retail and to the lobby. Uh, but you make a very good point. It, it can be a problem. But you know, it's part of the evolution of a neighborhood. I have a question, uh, and uh, this is really, I think Cameron um, is trying to catch up on, on and take uh, control of some of the Erica projects uh, since she's no longer with the city, um, move back closer to family. Um, uh, the, the standard um, in this redevelopment plan, <clears throat> can you just clarify, Eli, um, along from MLK, What's the furthest depth that the building extends as you measure it from uh, MLK? Oh, you mean on, on, on the rear yard? Sure. Yeah, just that building depth. I think you said it's 85? It's, it's 90 feet to here. Can you see my cursor? Okay. Yep. So the, the ground floor projects 90 feet from the Martin Luther King Drive property line. Okay. The upper floors? The upper floors are 80 feet. Right. So um, so I actually, I don't know if you have a variance. It might just be misinterpreted. Can we just uh, clarify, Eli? Um, oh. Who is that? Let me let go. Oh, oh. Yours. Yeah, I think Orlando, we're getting an echo out of your, uh, your mic. Oh, uh, all right, I don't hear it anymore. But, uh, it might've just been a misinterpretation of the standard. Um, this is a, a perfect example of why the, the standard was written this way, but it might've been misinterpreted. Uh, the, the rear yard is controlled by measuring from any lot line that fronts a right of way. So the ground floor can actually extend up to 95 feet from any right of way line on our property. Right. Any yep. floors above extend from uh, 85 feet from any right, right. of way. It seems like it's called out as a variance on the agenda. Uh, that we mistake. Well, we the, did. We yeah, did notice the interpretation that, that, that was that. Uh, I'm sorry, you you're talking over, um, Mr. Pizzillo. If you could just finish your statement. I I I was just confirming with what Matt had said that we did notice this and listed as, as a deviation, those two items, the 85 feet as for above the ground floor and the 90, 95 feet at the ground floor. But go ahead, Eli. Well, maybe Ed can answer this better, but my interpretation, Matt, is that the front of the building would be on Fulton Street and you'd measure back the required distance, 95 feet. Yeah, the would... standard's flexible. It says from any right of way fronting the subject property. So. Um, that might make Ed's testimony a little bit easier. Yeah, That's how yeah. city planning would interpret it, um, is that it, it's a flexible standard and doesn't pertain just to a front yard um, lot line um, or front lot line. Well, so, that, 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 that's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Uh, other questions or comments? Uh, anybody, any questions? No. Okay, thank you, Mr. Morton. Thank you. Thank you, Eli. Uh, call Ed Colling, please. Oh, 
Sorry, Ed. Okay. <laughs> it's getting late. I can't keep up with the boxes. Okay. <laughs> Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Uh, yes, I do. And state and spell your full name for the record, please. <clears throat> My name is Edward, E-D-W-A-R-D, Colling, K-O-L-L-I-N-G. Thank you. And licensed Mr. Collins. Planner, and with my license is current and paid to date. Okay, excellent. Thank you. And uh, off the record, how's the shoulder? It's coming along nicely, thank you. I started my physical therapy and it's already getting some flexibility back. It's, I was very lucky. Good. Good to hear. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to try to jump right to sort of we're going, we're, we're going to rely primarily on the C2 criteria where the benefits outweigh the detriment. So first, I want to talk about how we meet the objectives of the, of the redevelopment uh, area, because I think those are really the, the benefits that we're, that we're going to try to emphasize. And uh, one of the ones, the objectives, the first one actually, is to reestablish the Jackson Hill Corridor is a vibrant neighborhood commercial district, providing a wide variety of retail amenities to the surrounding area. And uh, for those of us who have been Jersey City residents or had been Jersey City residents for a long time, we, re we remember when Martin Luther King Drive was called Jackson Avenue, and it was a very vibrant commercial corridor. Uh, I grew up not too long, not, not too far from here. Matter of fact, I was born on Armstrong Avenue and baptized in Sacred Heart Church. And I, my mom used to tell me stories about walking down Jackson Avenue with me in the stroller and how what, what a wonderful you know, commercial strip it was. And hopefully that will, that will come, come back. Um, another one of the objectives is to uh, create an, uh, employment, housing, commercial and retail opportunities, which this project obviously does. Another is to reduce automobile dependency by encouraging higher density development um, Along, along the avenue uh, and to uh, impress the in, in proximity to mass transit, public transportation. You know, the 87 bus runs right down Martin Luther King Drive. Bergen Avenue is a short block to the west. Kennedy Boulevard, another short block further. Bus routes running up and down those streets, Ocean Avenue. And we're a little bit more than a half mile to the Richard Street Light Rail Station. Um, another was to encourage uh, quality retail sales and services, and you've heard from Eli's description there, there are two rather large commercial uh, units that front on to uh, Martin Luther King Drive. He's done a, a nice design by pulling the, uh, the, the, the storefronts back a, a bit to give it a little bit more pedestrian space, and uh, I think that that's a, a nice design. And then we're also talking about the construction of new buildings on vacant lots. And you saw in Eli's presentation that this is a pretty significant vacant lot. It's a corner location. It sticks out like a sore thumb, uh, or maybe since it's vacant, it sticks in like a sore thumb. But the idea is to try to create some really vibrant um, uh, in infill development there. So that's really where our positives are coming from. And if we go to look at the the variances, one of them is this, the shape factor. And that's really sort of a pre-existing condition because lot four is an unusual L-shaped lot that was created way back. And what we've done is taken in a conforming lot, the larger or the deeper lot, I should say, it's hundred feet deep and, and kind of consolidated it. And that's really consistent with the redevelopment plan too, because it's encouraging the consolidation of lots so you can get a more, more comprehensive development. But it did result in making it a little bit more irregular. So we need the um, the deviation for the uh, the lot shape, um, and I think that that can be granted under the C two criteria. There's no substantial detriment by granting that variance. The lots are pre existing; they're just simply being combined. So the, the, it's really just a matter of lines on a piece of paper. To the person in in the, in the public looking at this lot, nothing's going to change as to its actual character. It's just that the lots will be consolidated for more comprehensive development. Um, the maximum building height, I think we're 15 or 16 inches over the height. And that's a result, again, of the architecture. And I think you know, the, what Eli has done was to make the ground floor a little bit taller. He's pushed the, pushed the first floor back, but he also wanted to make it a little taller so to just kind of offset the fact that it's a little bit deeper. Therefore, you get more air light, more visibility in, into that space. 
And although it does provide the overhang does provide some protection, it also provides for better visibility by increasing the height. So it kind of offsets the set fact that it's that it's set back by allowing more air and light into that lower level and more visibility into the commercial spaces. So I, in there are two, I think the benefits significantly outweigh any detriment. Uh, I agree with Matt on his, his interpretation of that uh, rear yard situation where you would measure it from any right of way. I think we just took a more conservative approach. And if you looked at the Fulton Avenue as being the front and measuring it from there, you'd, you'd end up with a gap of uh, 25 feet or more at the ground floor. That, obviously that doesn't make any sense. Uh, and, and what Eli did was and still he maintained that criteria if you measured it from Martin Luther King Drive. So he still meets and actually he exceeds it. I think he could go back 95 feet at the ground floor. He's only back 90 feet. The upper, upper floors do conform as well. So if there was a variance, you could look at it as, as, the, as the hardship of the corner lot, but also the fact that the benefits significantly outweigh any detriments. And, and from a practical perspective, we comply anyway, as measured from Martin Luther King Drive. And, I, and then I think there's a, a, a rather minor variance for some of the, the glass uh, percentages of the ground floor. But if you looked at the, at the, uh, the, the design the, the, that, that Eli has shown, there is the storefronts themselves are significant. I think that the variance really is a result of the fact that we have one stairway that is more or less a blank wall at the uh, furthest area to the south, which is adjacent to a residential building. So I think it makes more sense uh, that you have that more quiet uh, frontage there and that the activity that would occur in, in front of the storefronts would be um, um, kind of set aside from that residential building uh, and, and, and protected a little bit from that additional pedestrian activity. Um, I heard what Mr. Allen had, had said about the issue with uh, uh, homelessness in the area and in the air, but you have to I think what, what we plan for is we don't plan for what's there today. We plan for what could be there tomorrow, five years from now and 10 years from now. All, all neighborhoods go through transition and this neighborhood has gone from a vibrant commercial district to being less, less than vibrant, shall we say. But I think if we go elsewhere on Martin Luther King Drive where the redevelopment has started a little bit sooner, where you're, you're starting to see that vibrancy come back. And I, and I agree with what Eli is saying. I, I remember downtown Jersey City where people would smirk when, when the city required ground floor retail in places that people said it would it would never it would never prosper. And today, well, you, you see what happens in downtown Jersey City. The pedestrian activity is much higher. There's a lot more uh, pedestrian traffic on the on the streets and the and and the and the shops are, uh, are are thriving and growing. And you know, knock on wood, pray to pray to God that happens on Martin Luther King Drive uh, as well. So uh, I think the, this project meets all the criteria. Other than those, those minor variances, we meet all the criteria of the, of the uh, Jackson Hill redevelopment area. We beat, certainly meet the intents and purpose of that, purposes of that. And the granting of these variances would not result in any substantial detriment either to the general good, public welfare, or to the intent and purpose of the plan. All right, thank you, Mr. Colley. Uh, any questions, anybody? Any questions for Ed? No. All right, thank you. And Chairman, that concludes our presentation unless there's any other questions or comments. Okay, thank you, thank you Council. Uh, all right, so if anybody from public wants to comment, this is your chance, please raise your hand. If you are calling in, please press star nine to raise your hand. I don't see any call-ins anymore. But if you'd like to comment, please raise your hand. Seeing, seeing no comment uh, or public, I wish I uh, move to close the public portion. Second. Okay, motion is made and seconded. Public is closed. Okay, so I'm handling this one. Uh, for gotcha. Me. And uh, I guess I'd just like to start by noting the. Um, <laughs> the result of a redevelopment plan that 
requires the applicant to meet with the community. And I think we quite, you know, apparently see the effect. Um, but anyway, that's just a side note. Um, I'll just ask that the applicant agree to the conditions stated in the staff report dated April 6, 2021. Sure, Cameron, thank you. Uh, we reviewed the memo, discussed it with my client. All the conditions are acceptable to us. Thank you. Okay. And in regards to the C variances, um, Ed Noling's testimony covered all of the bases for planning department's concerns. And um, they are, in fact, you know, de minimis in a sense. And we feel that they will not have a su substantial detriment to the uh, zone plan or uh, the general welfare of the public. Um, and with that, planning staff recommends approval. All right, thanks, Cameron. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve case P20-124 uh, presented, as presented to the board tonight. Second. All right, motion made and seconded for approval. All right, so Dr. Gonzalez? Aye. All right, Dr. Desai? Aye. Commissioner Horton? Aye, uh, great looking building. I'm glad a lot of development's coming towards that area. Commissioner Allen. Uh, nice building. I like the first floor apartment that sits back, you know, off the main drag. And Mr. Collin, I, I know you've been doing this way longer than I have. I hope you're right about <laughs> everything. So I vote on. Uh... Council President Waterman. Aye. Commissioner Torres. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. Motion carries all in favor with conditions. Okay, thank you, Cameron. And thank you for getting the uh, doctors out, out of the way ahead of time, first and second. Uh, it only <laughs> took me the whole meeting. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, uh, let's move on to thank memorialization thank you, of resolutions, please. Thanks, Council. Have, have, have a good night. night. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I think I, I only have four uh, resolutions. I just want to make sure that that's okay since things were changed last minute. Um, Cameron, uh, you got you sent me four and that's all I have. Yeah, it's just four. Okay, perfect. So, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to memorialize the following resolutions. There's four of them. Like I said, the first one is uh, approving an administrative amendment to the preliminary and final major site plan with conditions. Property location is 711 Montgomery Street. The applicant is 711 Montgomery LLC. Block is 15004, 15 and 31. Uh, case number on that is P20-141. Uh, resolution number two is in the matter of 337 Palisade Avenue. Uh, application number P21-001. This is applicant 337 Palisade Holding LLC, uh, block 4504, lot 31. Case number, uh, as I said, P21001, decided March 23rd, 2021, memorialized April 6, 2021. Uh, third resolution is uh, in the matter of the application of uh, 95 Jefferson Avenue, at property address at 95 Jefferson Avenue. Applicant is Jia Lu Chen and Ying Wan. That's J I A L U Chen and Ying Wang, block 5706, lot 16, case number P20 110, hearing date February 2nd, 2021. Uh, and the last, uh, I think, let's see. Yeah, the last resolution I have here is 21 Caven Point Avenue. This is approving an administrative amendment to a preliminary and final major site plan with conditions. Applicant address 21 uh, Caven Point Ave, applicant 21 Caven Point Avenue LLC, block 24301, uh, lot number four, case number P21 014. All right, thank you. Do I have a second? Second. All right. Thank you, guys. Uh, could we have a roll call, please? Go for it. Uh, Commissioner Gonzalez? Aye. Commissioner Torres? Aye. Commissioner Allen? 
Aye. Commissioner Horton. Aye. Uh, Council President Waterman. Aye. Commissioner Desai. Aye. And Chairman Langston. Aye. All right, thank you. Uh, do we need executive session? Anybody? Do you want a quick few minutes just to discuss the kind of comments you made with Councilman Waterman and the Neighborhood Association? Association, Association, Association. Sure, 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 we can do sure, that. Sure, we can do that. All right, <laughs> I heard it too. Mr. Yeah. Chair, let's make All right, a motion. It wasn't just me, right? Mr. Motion. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to enter into uh, executive session. Second. Okay, I'm okay, going to stop. We have a motion and made for executive session. Uh, I apologize to everybody that's still on. Uh, we need to go into a private session. I'm going to stop Thank the recording now, in. and uh, we just hold off on talking until we get everyone out. All right. So I'm going to stop okay. the recording Thank now. You. All right, go. I did. I did. All right, we're recording. Mr. Chair, okay. I'd like Thank to make a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Um, anybody opposed? <laughs> no. <You>. Okay. <laughs> Hearing none. Bridget, adjourn. Thank you, everybody. Hi, guys. Good night. 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 Good night.